The USD 343 Live Media Stream is brought to you by Ham Companies, a strong employer of Jefferson County for over 70 years, providing high-quality service in waste management, asphalt, road construction, and quarries. And McCray Lumber, with two convenient locations in Topeka and Lawrence, be sure to call R.J. Brown at the Lawrence location or Travis Daniels at the Topeka location for all of your home improvement needs. And First Aid Bank and Trust, your local full-service bank with hometown pride. Let their friendly staff help you with loans, savings, and checking. Whether you're a longtime customer or looking to open a new account, First State Bank and Trust is there for you. Now, please direct your attention to the football field. As a Perry LeCompton High School band, under the direction of John Nottingham, plays tonight's national anthem. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Perry Compton High School. We have a beautiful fall evening here tonight. Joining me here in the booth is Mark Armstrong. Mark, thank you for joining us again. Hey, always a pleasure, JB. Friday Night Lights, as they say. Gotta love it. And also, Armin Landis, again, back for the second week in a row after his nice vacation to Colorado Springs. Armin, welcome back, buddy. Thanks. Good to be here. And uh, is this better than Colorado Springs because there's no rain and it's really not cold? It's beautiful football <laughs> weather. Yes, it is. And again, we've got a good game for you. This is the last regular season game. Uh, the cause will be taking on the Bishop Ward Cyclones tonight. Uh, the Cyclones, unfortunately, are, are coming off a, a very hard season. They, they are winless. Uh, they've, they've had a lot of lopsided wins. So uh, we would expect, again, the cause tonight to, uh, to come through this. They have clinched the second place in the district. So uh, we're kind of curious to see how this game's going to shape out. Gentlemen, what do you expect to see here tonight? Well, I, I, for one, think that we're going to see uh, a much improved offensive output over last week. Uh, Hayden was a tough defense to run against, and we didn't get many, catch many breaks. 
Uh, but I think we're going to catch some breaks tonight and make some of our own because we got a group of kids that they want to go out and show that they've got more than what we were able to do last week. And I think also you're going to see a stark difference in programs. You know, um, they've got a bit of some size over there, but we've got quickness up and down the length of our offensive and defensive line and the secondary and the backfield, everything. We've just got a lot of team speed. And hopefully that will be a big difference maker in tonight's game. All right, so there you have it. We're going to take a break here real quick. Again, we did have the Perry LeCompton High School Band uh, Player National Anthem, so uh, we will uh, be back after we get a few of the weekly rundowns back to you. And now it's time for the Week 8 Rundown, where we're going to take a look at the state rankings and the standings in Class 3A, District 3, and 4 this week. So let's go ahead and get started. Up for the 3A rankings, again, it's number one, Andale. They've been there all season long. Last week, Andale beat Clearwater 55-6. to Number two, Sabatha Blue Jays, a team we faced earlier in the year and have a chance to face in a couple of weeks if things go the right way. Last week, the Sabatha Blue Jays shut out Wamigo 56-0. At number three, the Scott City Beavers moved to 3-0. Last week, Scott City beat Colby, who was undefeated until last week, the score of 35-12 in that contest. Looking at number four, it's still the Pratt Greenbacks at 7-0. Last week, Pratt downed Holcomb 51-15. And the new number five team, after the loss by the cause, the Galena Bulldogs move into the five spot at 7-0. Last week, the Bulldogs downed Columbus 38-0. And others considered in the rankings, Chapman, Colby, Marysville, Parsons, the cause still in that group, Perry LeCompton, Prairie View, Smoky Valley, and, of course, the team that beat the cause last week, Topeka Hayden. So there you have it, your top five and others mentioned in Class 3A. Looking at scores from Week 7 in District 3, our district, Perry LeCompton, of course, we mentioned the 20-0 defeat last week. Santa Fe Trail, the big win over Bishop Ward, 64-8. Bishop Ward, the team we'll have here tonight. Jeff West, 41-6 over Wellsville. So now looking at the standings, you can see, again, Topeka Hayden clinched with last week's win. Perry LeCompton, again, no way to finish lower than second, so we have clinched the uh, runner-up position there. Jeff West and Santa Fe Trail will play tonight. That will determine who finishes third and fourth in the district. Wellsville and Bishop Ward round out District 3. Neither of those teams will make the playoffs this year. Looking at District 4, again, the reason we want to look at this district, uh, we will play the team who finishes third in District 4. That will come down to Wamigo and Holton, who play tonight. So we will play the winner of that contest. Sabetha, of course, has clinched District 4, and Marysville has clinched the runner-up position in District 4. Royal Valley, Hiawatha, finishing out the bottom of that district. Looking at matchups for tonight, Bishop Ward again here at Perry Compton playing the cause. Jeff West will travel to Santa Fe Trail. Hayden will go to Wellsville to take on the Eagles. And in that District 4 matchup, Sabetha at Royal Valley, the big contest, Holton at Wamigo, and Hiawatha will go to Marysville. So there you have it, folks. That's your week, out, week 8 roundup, and we'll be right back as we prepare for the start of this game. All right, looks like we are ready for kickoff. I'm ready. I'm ready. Right behind you, Armin. <laughs> you block me, I score. <laughs> All right, kicking off for the cause, number three, Colton Maloney, teeing the ball up. Uh, again, nice crowd here tonight uh, for the hometown cause. Uh, unfortunately, the other side, the Cyclones, doesn't look like they're traveling that well. Uh, again, a few parents in the stands over there, but nonetheless, uh, those fans that did come, I think, are going to see a, a pretty good game here tonight. Again, as we go through this, we might be uh, seeing a lot of different uh, faces and new faces out on the field tonight, depending on what happens as the game progresses. But we'll see. As you know, folks, anything can happen, as they say. Oh, yes. Well, hopefully we'll be able to see some uh, differences between team speed tonight in the favor of the cause. All right, here's Maloney's kick. Kick traveling right down the middle. of me fielded right at the 12-yard line. 
taken by the Cyclone back. Number 11 heading to the right side where he's going to be wrapped up. Takes the ball right at the 30-yard line where the Cyclones will start out the game first and 10. Yeah, the return was by Milton Clenenden. He's a D-back on the defense, so we won't see him right off the bat. Armin, you said before the game as we were talking, uh, this team likes to platoon, which means uh, the starters will play one side of the ball on offense, and then we'll have a different group of 11 playing defense tonight. Is that what you expect? Yeah, we got oh, should have about nine this. guys. Oh, we, we got a, junk off we got some right stuff coming right away, don't we, Coach? Yep. Got a little bit of a trickery here by the Cyclones. A little bit of unbalanced line. We'll call that student body left formation. Kind of a swinging gate. Snap, number 14, the quarterback for the Cyclones takes it, pitches out to number 34 behind the line, and that did not fool the cause on no. first down. It isn't going to make any difference what that was, that was, is. It really isn't. That's a, that's a tough play. That's number uh, – yeah. who, who was it made that tackle there? That was number – What number? I, I think it was 76. Who, who's 76 for the cause? Yeah, Am 75 I was – Maybe I read that 72, wrong. 72, Spencer Funk, 75 is going to be oh, that's, Sean Urban. Yeah, it's Sean Urban, 75. Well, they're going to continue with this jump. Okay. So, again, unbalanced formation. The bulk of the offensive set is on the left side. Number 14, Stein, your quarterback, throws again. That ball knocked down, almost picked off. By number 72, again, Spencer Funk back there to disrupt things. You, you know, and I will tell you this, that that's a pretty darn creative way. I mean, they've got no wins. They're looking at doing something different, surprising people, and that's a pretty creative offensive set. And I'm not saying successful, but, but it, you know, you got a guy on the other side who's thinking about some new stuff. Yeah, not something you see every day, that's for sure. Now the Cyclone's showing more of a little bit uh, more common formation. Three receivers to the right, actually one coming mm -hmm. off the field. Two to the left, now motioning into a three-receiver left. The quarterback, Stein, fires over the oh. middle. That ball almost picked off by number 55, Scott Urban. Yeah. He was that, right there. That was, was a, right there. That was a good read a by dangerous pass. Yeah. Yeah. I thought maybe they'd get a flag on it. I thought there were two guys in motion at the same time, but yeah. well, he got set early. I think you saw that correctly, Coach. I think the official just kept the flag in the pocket, just being kind on that. Fourth down along coming up the Cyclones. We'll actually call it a fourth and about 18 to go. Punt formation coming up for Bishop Ward. Again, Bishop Ward, the team, white helmets, white jersey, white pants, your hometown cause, silver helmets, blue tops, and silver pants. Back deep for the cause, number three, Colton Malley, and 38, Shane Quinlan. This punt short going down the middle of the field. It's going to take a Bishop Ward bounce, travel just across the midfield stripe, settling down at about the 48-yard line. Well, I can't complain about the field position, no, fellas. Sir. Right. Good start for the call defense. You know, and I know, that, again, this is not a big deal, but did you notice that the officials did not blow the ball dead as soon as it came to rest? Sometimes some officials do, some don't. I used to teach my kids, if they haven't blown that ball dead and you're on the, on the offense, uh, you might go ahead and pick it up. I mean, yeah. so the defenders want to make sure it's down. Well, there, there are some, too. The defense will just go touch it and leave it. And after that first touch, the That's offense right. can still pick it up. So, again, first series here for the call offense. Two receivers to the right, one to the left is Maloney. Gives straight ahead, number 40. That's Patton. Blaine Patton pounds ahead. He's going to pick up about five yards on first down. And that was big old number 76, Dominic Marino, defensive tackle. Pretty good way to start for the offense. Pound it up inside. Make sure they remember we've got someone that can go there. Second down and five coming up for the cause. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield. Kellum, the quarterback, taking a quick throw out to Maloney, number three. Maloney with good yardage on that left side. Still on his feet, close to the 20-yard line where he's going to be taken down. Remaining inbounds. Nope. The official stops the clock this time out of bounds. Oh. That does that? Isn't it funny, last week, did you notice the <laughs> number of times the ball went out of bounds and the clock wasn't stopped? I think we commented that a few times. Yeah. Well, I think it, it did matter a little bit when we were running out of time at the end of the first half. But. Well, good throw, good catch. All right, ball setting just inside the 20. First and 10 coming up for the cause. Gibbs straight ahead. Looks like that's going to be Quinlan. Quinlan weaving his way to the right side. Steps around, crosses the goal line, 
and he is in for the touchdown. So the cause score first here, 9.55, still remaining in the first quarter. 6 nothing. your score. It sure made it look easy, didn't it? It all starts up front. We talked about that all year long, haven't we, fellas? The offensive line locked onto their – uh, defenders, and they did not let go. You know, if you watch the offensive line for the cause, they are so fundamentally yeah, sound. Yeah. Uh, they did a great job of getting on, like you say, locking onto their guy and just pushing him yeah. out of the way. And you don't have to really turn them. You just need no. to stay on them and just move them backwards. Yeah, a great block doesn't necessarily have to knock somebody on their rear yeah. end. All right, yeah. extra point attempt. Uh, Mason Frank on to attempt the kick here for the cause. Spot is down. Kick is up. And how about that? We got one through. Right. The kick is good for the extra point. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. That's great. Yeah, good start <laughs> for the cause, fellas. Yeah, Always good. believe that an extra point kicker is yeah. absolutely essential for right. a high school Quite football Quite a little team. discussion about that before the game started. Yes, we so did. I guess we're all kind of on the same page there, so that's good. All right, looking at the can cause scoring very quickly. Three-play drive there. Um, in last week, we mentioned uh, the, the uh, Cyclones – Dropped a lopsided game. In fact, I think uh, a lot of their games this year have been very one-sided. The Cyclones had a, a, a tough season behind them. Now, they're, they're one man short on that line. Yeah. Oh, there. Maloney again on to kick off for the cause. I, I don't. Yeah, there's the fifth they, guy on the they line. They moved him up that time. And as we're waiting for the kick, we'd like to uh, mention to everyone listening in, Perry United Methodist Church, Church will host a trunk or treat this uh, on Wednesday, October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. Activities include a jack-o'-lantern contest, free books for children, pulled pork sliders, chips, and drinks, and, of course, candy. Can't forget about the candy. So please stop by the Perry United Church for Halloween scare. And your kick goes down the middle. Play is stopped. Let's yeah. see what we have. We were offside by about a step. Somebody on this side, real close, or towards the middle, but on this side. If we had instant replay, I could show you that, but you know, maybe next year. Maybe next year we'll have <laughs> Will Gans will figure that one out for yeah, us. There you go. Yeah. All right, so the cause will back up five yards, and we will kick again in no time off the clock. <laughs> Clock would not start until it was filled by Bishop Ward. Back deep for the Cyclones. We mentioned number 11. Clendenden. Clendenden, excuse me. I'll, I'll take your word for it, Coach. There you go. Again, on the outside for the cause is 26, Thad Metcalf, and also number one, Parker Stone, making his way down. Ball is still on the ground, taken and picked up at the 15 and covered up quickly by number 12, William Welch. Number 26, Thad Metcalf also went on that stop. Number six, Sam Alexander picked it up. He's a wide receiver on the offense. We'll see him in a minute. Well, it's good to see a couple of sophomores on that, especially kickoff team, running down there and making that first contact, racking, racking them up and driving them backwards. Look yeah, good. that's one reason right there where you don't want to mishandle the kickoff because if once it gets past the first kid, it's pretty hard to pick it up and get some field position. And now they're in the hole. And again, the, the Cyclones, their first series was a three and out. And again, we did see a couple of very unusual formations this time. Cyclones on first down showing, again, something a little more familiar. Three receivers to the right. And quickly, not what the Cyclones wanted, so they're going to call a timeout. We will take one as well, and you'll hear a few words from our sponsor. First State Bank and Trust is an independent community bank serving the Perry community, Jefferson County, and Douglas County for many years. They have a long history of community service dating back to 1934, and that service continues today in seven locations throughout northeast Kansas. Those locations are Perry, Lawrence, Tonganoxie, Baser, and Kansas City, Kansas. They offer a full array of financial products and services delivered by local banking professionals. Are you looking to purchase a new vehicle or better yet, to purchase a vehicle for your student? Let First State Bank and Trust help make this process an easy one. They offer same-day approvals, new low rates, and the convenience of having payments charged directly from your checking account. Be sure to stop by the Perry Branch at 402 Plaza Drive in Perry, Kansas, or give them a call at 785-597-5151.
And we are back here after this timeout in 9.48 remaining still in the first quarter. Bishop Ward offense not liking what they had, so the coach calls a timeout from the sideline. I think you, uh, one of you mentioned it may have been too many men on the field or somebody in the wrong spot that uh, led to that timeout. So let's see if the Cyclones have things squared away as they come out here for this first down play. You know, if I were in the position that, that Bishop Ward finds themselves, I would be considering – trying to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible. Not to say you don't throw the ball, but um, keep the clock running. Spread formation, number 14, Stein, your quarterback shotgun formation. Give it straight ahead, and he is met by number 72, Spencer Funk. Spencer Funk having a great start to this game tonight. Yeah, he, he, he didn't. There was no room for, for the offense on that play. That back got the ball, and down he went. All right, loss of about five on first down, so second and 15 coming up for Bishop Ward. Again, three receivers to the right of the formation up to the top of your screen. One receiver to the bottom. Stein, the quarterback, checks the formation. He is in shotgun formation, a running back set just to his left. Calls for the ball. A little bit of movement. Flags come in. Whistles will stop play. I'm going to guess it's offsides on the cause. It was kind of a hard count, and yeah. yeah, it is. And also, although the Cyclones moved up front of the line on the offensive line, I think they were drawn off yeah. when the, the cause jumped. So that's why the penalty's going against the cause there. Sometimes it's tough to watch that football. All right, second and ten coming up. Bishop Ward runs very tight splits. Yeah. Now the Cyclones shift that three-receiver formation to the left to the short side of the field. Stein calls for the ball, takes a snap, gives straight ahead to the running back. And again, nothing there on that play. I believe maybe a loss of two on second down. 55, that's Scott Urban? Yes. I'll tell you what, I was watching him that play, and he had no doubts about it. He saw his, read his key, and he took two steps forward, and it was right there. That's a great read by a linebacker. You know, that's really hard to run again when, when your splits are so tight. It's real hard to run against a, a good defensive team. In your linebackers, number 55, Scott <laughs> Urban, and 58, Hayden Robb. Makes it even tougher. <laughs> yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and 12 coming up for Bishop Ward. Stein dropping back, quick throw out to the flat. That ball bounces off the chest and incomplete yeah. of the intended receiver. Well, once again, the cause were all over it anyway. They yeah. had read that pretty quickly. I, it's just, uh, boy, good, I, good football IQ, I think. Well, Arnold, you mentioned something earlier. If, if Bishop Ward comes out here and does a lot of that, trying the short passes, this is going to be a long football game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I assume since we're at home, do we run, have a running clock tonight? Should this get out of hand? I, I believe we would. Uh, both coaches would have to agree on that. Yes. Trying to get the number of the punter for Bishop Ward as a five, and he's got to run a fake punt. Has some room on the right he's side. Let's see it. if number four comes up and stops no. him short. And he is going to be short of the marker, but a gutsy call there by the Bishop Ward coach. I tell you, that's the kind of thing. Again, you got to give him credit. Very little success, but that's something to work on. I think is that going to go on against the offense? There's a penalty back here in the defensive backfield, so I would assume there's a illegal block downfield, illegal man downfield, personal foul, face mask by them. Oh, the client. So Turn. Yeah. So we get the ball in pretty good field position. <laughs> Yeah, it's not often you get it on the 25 on yeah. fourth down. So the Cyclones will turn that over on downs as they did fall short of the first down marker. So as mentioned, the cause, great field position. Looks like the ball is going to be spotted right about the 24 of the Cyclones. So a very short field indeed for the call offense. Number 20, Kellum coming out at the quarterback position, 40, Blaine Patton, lined up just to his right. Two receivers to the top of the screen for the cause. One to the bottom is number four, Morgison. Gives straight ahead. It's going to be 40, Patton. Patton again with a nice gain on first down, running hard. I, I like to see Patton 
run the ball right up the gut because he's such a hard-nosed kid. And let's see. Mark, that looks like it's going to be second down, and we'll call it right at five. Kellum again, quarterback in the shotgun formation. A little read option. Kellum keeps it going straight ahead. A lot of room for him. Kellum racing to the corner, and he glides in for the second score of the night. Yeah. How many times have we said it? Speed kills. Speed yeah. kills. It yeah. Certainly when Dalton uses it. Yeah, it's a, one of those reads. He makes the right read. He steps up, gets past the line, bounces to the outside. That's classic what you teach your backs to do, and there's nobody going to catch him at that point. So... Great field position, great result, and here we are up uh, two scores already with uh, only well, seven minutes gone or seven minutes left in the first quarter. So good yeah. start. Cause making it look pretty easy tonight. Well, when, oh, we got a new kicker in. Looks like number 27, Madison Tinsley. She is in to attempt this point after. Shane Quinlan, number 38, will be holding the ball. Snap is down. Flag coming in. And the umpire. She didn't have her mouthpiece in. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh Maddie. Yeah. Oh. So without that mouth mouthpiece, she will have to come out for one play. So in comes number 22. That is Mason Frank. He's going to attempt the point after here. So is that that's not a penalty anymore? It used to be. I th it did used to be a penalty. You're correct. As long as they stop it in time, I suppose that that's correct. Snap is good. Hold is down. And we, oh, it didn't look bad. Looks like it must have been just to the outside of the upright, so that yeah. extra point, no good. Oh, he got the ball up, yeah. and it was high enough, just wasn't quite through the uprights. All right, so again, as mentioned, that messed extra point takes your score to 13 to 0. 705, still left, uh, still a lot of time left in this first quarter. Well, the interesting thing about defensively, I don't, uh, they have one positive game. That was on the fake punt, but there's still negative yardage on, the, on their offense. So once again, the call defense stepping up and shutting them down. I'd like to see that. All right, so for the third kickoff here already of this first quarter. Again, we expect to see uh, Colton Maloney again teeing this up. Cause now making their way out on the field, and it will be Colton. Two return man back deep for the Cyclones. Looking to trying to get something started here for Bishop Ward. I think they would really like to see a, a nice return on this third kickoff. Wouldn't mention the field looks great again tonight, fellas. You know, Brian Williams it has does. done a super job marking this field all season long. Yeah, it's about as close to perfect as you can get a high school football field that get, needs to be marked every week. Absolutely. So here's Colton Melanie's kick going right down the middle of the field. going to be filled at about the 14-yard line by number 11. He's working his way back up towards the middle of the field. Nice return. Takes the ball out to about the 29. So once again, good coverage by the kickoff team. That's a nice job. You can hold them inside the 30 or thereabouts. You've done a pretty decent job. Give them a long field. Make the offense go a long ways to score. Well, I think it's kind of important defensively right now for the cause, or offensively also. Maintain focus. Mm -hmm. Maintain drive. Yep. Uh, you can't get sloppy. Uh, you gotta you got to be fundamentally sound and, and work hard to do your best job out there. And some new faces starting to work yeah. in up front for the cause. 68. Chris Boyd, number 66, in on the defensive line. Cyclones lining up three receivers to the left. A give straight ahead to the running back. Looking around, and it looks like he puts the ball on the turf, and he does. That's going to be a recovered fumble for the cause. Scott Irvin picked it up. Well, there's some good pressure up inside. They got some penetration right away, and uh, it was bang, bang, just like that. <laughs> Defense playing well again. I, I, I am just amazed that they run such tight splits. Yeah. It, it jams everything up to the inside, and as quick as our linemen are, 
they're able to read it and get across and just stuff them. Cause again, good field position taking over to the uh, 26 of Bishop Ward. Quick pass out to number three, Maloney. Maloney with a lot of room up on the top of the screen. Still on his feet, dancing around, and he is slung out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Flag coming in on that tackle. Let's see what the officials call is going to be here on the far side of the field. Did you guys happen to notice anything on that one? I, I, I was going to say, I, I would say face mask because as soon as he started throwing him around, he... Yeah. He flew it, but, but just a guess. But it was only those two people involved in it, so I don't think, yeah, I think you guys are right. And the uh, first down play picked up about 16, and you'll add half the distance to the goal on the face mask penalty. So this will put the ball down inside of the 10, inside of the 5 at the 4-yard line. Well, it, it will be, should be first and goal, even though the down there changes to first down. Kellum takes a snap, a little give to Quinlan. Quinlan straight ahead, and he is in for the touchdown. So the left side of that line just caved in the defense. Yeah. My goodness, that was impressive. Nice job, fellas, on the left. So less than 30 seconds off the clock, and we have another score. Yeah, that, and that was Caden Quinlan, not Shane. Well, Number okay. 30. Number yeah, 30. I, th I thought that was Caden, the sophomore, getting a little action early in the game today. I didn't notice that. I'm, well, I could be wrong, but I thought that's what I saw, 30. Well, Shane is back in right now to spot the ball down, and it, it is Madison Tinsley in to attempt this point after. Looks like the mouthpiece is in. Everything looks to be set. Let's see if Madison can, can knock one home here. Kick is up, and she does. And that point well, after attempt right. is good. She's in the scorebook, as they say. Huh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, so she will show up on the official uh, scorebook tomorrow when she looks in the Lawrence paper it will have her name there well, in black and white print. So far so good fellas there's really not much the cause have done wrong and, no. and not much uh, Bishop Ward has done really relatively well. So, um, yeah. This is the exact inverse of what happened last week yeah. in terms of yeah. difficulty. It was difficult last week. We played tough early. I mean it was a, virtually a scoreless, well a 6-0 game. Right going into in the second, beginning of the second half. So, Yeah, yep. last week was a defensive battle, and, and uh, you said it this week, completely the other side of the yeah. spectrum. Yeah, well, I, I think the offense, too, will start to vary what they're doing. I mean, we're going to see them throw a little bit more. We're going to, I think, see William Welch here in a little bit at, at the queue, according to the quarter, uh, coaching staff, and uh, get him some reps and uh, get prepared for a, a different type of a, uh, an offense where it gives them one more weapon that the defense has to worry about, somebody who can throw the ball sure. and still have to watch uh, Dalton Kellum somewhere in the backfield or split out. It looks so. like they're going to need to have enough men on the field there. One, two, three. Yep. Yep, they've got them. Maloney again set to kick off here with 638 left in the first. This kick a little bit shorter, going to be fielded right at the 20. And the Cyclone receiver takes the ball forward, steps out of bounds, flag coming in around the 30-yard line. So let's see what the official call is on that return. That's usually not good for the offense, the yep. returning team. Yeah. Going to be holding is the call, so that will move the ball back 10 yards from the spot of that foul. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, my neck's getting tired of craning to the right. We keep on pushing them back over there. We've got, a, I've got the wall right here. I'd like to get them over on this side of the field for a while so we can uh, look straight on here. But uh, field position has been totally in our favor, Armin. It's yeah. a tough, tough way to go for the offense, no matter who you are. Well, you know, part of defense sometimes is having to, an offense that can produce yeah. something. you yeah. got to be able to hold the ball, get a first down or two. Whether you score or not, that – Eats up clock, gives you field position. Yep. First and ten coming up for the Cyclones. Three receivers set to the top of the screen. This time Stein fakes. He's going to keep the ball, trying to get around the right side, and he's going to be met very abruptly there. That was right. a driving cat tackle. That was, was that Shane? That was 26, I believe. Oh, that was. Metcalf. Chad Metcalf, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I would not be on, want to be on the receiving end wow. of that tackle. Wow. That was that was a form tackle. That's yeah, the kind well, of tackle yeah, that you'd want to teach. It looked like the, uh, the ball carrier was going to move up that sideline too. Uh, so he just stopped. Yeah, until Metcalf came in and said, well, "Welcome to Perry LeCompton High School." 
Wamigo uh, at this point is up on Holton, 14 to 12, with 132 left in the first quarter. A little bit of update has implications ball on game going who there. we would play next week. We will play the winner of that game. Insane formation for the Cyclones with that three receivers to the top. Stein looking a quick throw out to the running back, number 11, in the flat. And again, looking to turn it up, and the uh, Caw defense slams him down to the ground after a short game. And that was Shane Quinlan that time that yeah. leveled that young man. You know, actually, from the offensive standpoint, I kind of like that play. They had him open. They had a mm -hmm. couple blockers out there. They just didn't know what to do. Well, well they got the positive like. yardage, and that's that's what you, that's all you can yeah. ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just noticing this, watching it, what a difference in team speed. Oh yes. Right now that we're seeing yeah. here. Yeah. Third down and about six coming up for Bishop Ward. Cyclones get uh, three receivers to the left of the formation this time. One receiver all alone to the top of the screen. Stein checks the defense, sees in the formation, brings it back in motion. Now looking to throw quickly out to number six in the flat. That ball going over the head of the intended receiver and falling incomplete. The cause had that pretty well covered anyway, I think. Ledbetter came up charging up, and uh, that ball hung up in the air way too long. That's yeah. the receiver. If I was him, I'd be getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Fourth down and six coming up for Bishop Ward. This should be a punting situation, but as we saw earlier in the game, even if you're in your own territory, the, the uh, Cyclones could fake this punt, so the cause have to be alert here. You know, we did talk about the possibility against the PLHS cause of faking a punt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't look like we were really well covered for that. And here's the punt, which is going to be blocked. That ball's going to be covered up by the cause inside of the 10. So, again, great field position for Perry LeCompton. How about you guys? I had a hard time seeing who that was. There's three or four was guys it Urban? right there. And was it Urban? I couldn't tell, guys. I just saw two blue jerseys going very fast yeah. at the punter. I couldn't tell which one got it. That was uh, pretty darn quick. Well, we could ask... Uh, Coach Ledbetter, he knows everything. Yes. I mean, if, he, if, he's, if we just open the door, we might be able to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to have fun on the booth you once in a while. Hey, that's what we do. This is a fun <laughs> job. Hmm. All right, first and goal coming up for the cause. William Welch, number 12, now in at the quarterback position, takes a snap. A read option give to Patton. Patton is going to pick up a oh. touchdown here on senior night. They're making it look easy. Oh, my gosh. Making wow. it look easy. But that's kind of what we expected tonight. You know, Bishop Ward has not had a lot of success defensively stopping anybody or offensively scoring. So it's no. kind of what was expected. But the cause, of course, stepping on the pedal, and there they go. Well, this is this is what happens, though, when, when you have a, a team with speed that, the cause oh, yeah. have, the, the yeah. fundamental preparations they have, and then, let's face it, a few bad breaks for yeah. Bishop Ward. But, but, but you're right. There's a definite difference there. Mason Frank on to attempt this kick. Yeah. This ball is going to go wide left. So the extra point is no good. That leaves your score at 26-0. to zero. Still 442 yeah. left in the first quarter. Yeah, we'll take a quick break here. Just a reminder, we have a very important election coming up this November. One of the most effective and simplest ways supporters of Perry LeCompton schools and Kansas public education can help students is to vote. Please register by October the 16th to be eligible to vote in the upcoming November the 6th general election. Your voice and your vote matter to Perry LeCompton kids and the future of USD 343. The USD 343 live media stream is brought to you by Ham Companies, a strong employer of Jefferson County for over 70 years, providing high quality service in waste management, asphalt, road construction, and quarries. And McCray Lumber, with two convenient locations in Topeka and Lawrence, be sure to call R.J. Brown at the Lawrence location or Travis Daniels at the Topeka location for all of your home improvement needs. And First State Bank and Trust, your local full service bank with hometown pride. Let their friendly staff help you with loans, savings, and checking. Whether you're a longtime customer or looking to open a new account, First State Bank and Trust is there for you. 
All right, Melanie set to kick off here again. First quarter, get another nice kickoff from Melanie right down the middle of the field, taking about the 15. And quickly, the return man is wrapped up, kept inside of the 25-yard line. Good so, also. Who's number four for, or what is that? Number four is going to be Morgison. And I think he's the one that got the initial slowdown on that. So he was down there in a hurry. Good to see Connor in on a little contact down there, the boy. We'll call it right at the 25. First and 10 for the Cyclones coming up. Again, starting to see some different faces here up front right now. It's going to be 51 Kibbe on the defensive line, 59 McCrory. Number 60, a freshman, Wesley Monahan in, and also number nine, Cole Logan, making up your front four. Three receivers set to the left side for Bishop Ward. One receiver to the right. Quickly coming in as another player needed up front on that offensive line. You do have to have five of those fellows up there. <laughs> and they're going to be a little delay a game here, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that's part of the problem, too. And we don't, we don't know what they're doing, if, they, if they've got different players playing this week or if they just aren't paying attention. But you would think if you're all-time offense, whenever the offense is on the field, you need to be there. You know, when yeah. once once you start making mistakes yeah. and once your team, well, you, you're 0 and, yeah. 0 and 7, then it gets <laughs> to a point where it's really – it's really hard to focus. Yep. All right, we back up five yards. The first and 15 coming up. A give to the running back trying to get to the right side, and he's going to be swallowed up by that Perry Compton defensive yeah, line. There was everybody on the defensive line was in on that tackle, uh, including they, both linebackers. <laughs> I saw. Looks like we had, might have an injured player down the field, getting up slowly at least. I think I saw Mr. Hustle, Hayden Robb, somewhere in the middle of that pile. Can't imagine a play like that going with him not being in there. So, yeah, kids everywhere. Got to love those linebackers. Looks like a loss of two on that play. So, that will bring up second and about 17. Again, the caught defense right now just simply pinning their ears back and coming. You know, one of the things I, I like, too, about kids like Kibby and Monahan. Uh, this may be a picture of the future. Next year we lose both defensive ends, so Kibby's going to have to come in, and Monahan's going to be needed along that offensive and defensive line, it looks like. And your linebacker set up behind that defensive line is 55 Urban and 58 Hayden Robb. And a quick pass out here to the outside. Play is going to be stopped before the play can get started. We're going to have an illegal procedure call, so the offense moved a little early on that. So we'll be back up five more yards. It's going to be second and 22. I think you're right. I'll take your word for it. And second and long for the Cyclones. Three receivers left, motion back, going across the face of the offense. Quickly, Stein throws out on the flat to the back. And that receiver catches the ball, pulls forward for about four yards. You know, that was that was a very well-designed play. It was very well executed. But they just don't have the speed to beat the cause to the spot. Um, yeah. Instead of a, a big gainer, you know, they got, what, three, three four yards out of it. Well, we were definitely talking about that before the game. The difference is going to be speed. We've got it, and they just do not. And that's not just one or two people. It's basically everybody. Third and long coming up for Bishop Ward. We'll call it about 18. Motion going from the top of the screen to the bottom. Stein looking to throw a little screen pass. Throwing out to the edge. Number two, Ledbetter picks that off. And he's going to be dropped just after the interception. So Cause will take over just inside the 35 at the 34-yard line. You know, I don't think the Cause have run but one or two plays in their own side of the field tonight. That was after the punt. It was uh, the first time they had the ball was at the 48. 48, yeah. Well, you know, Ledbetter, <laughs> two good things happened. There was great, co well, three, great coverage, good timing, and good hands. Yeah. And, uh, that's, you can't play that player any better, the senior. And, a, and a good, uh, you're right, good hands. Yeah. He made a sure, ta a sure yep. catch. Yep. So we got a turnover. Ball sitting at the 31, number 12, William Welch, again, in at quarterback. Official stopping play. Looks like we're going to get a timeout. A little bit of confusion by the Cyclones, so we will take one as well, and we'll be back shortly. 
Experience counts at McCray Lumber. Some of those box store employees weren't even born yet when most of the McCray crew were already experts. And today, all of them are the cream of the crop when it comes to smarts. Your building project is important. You want the best advice, not somebody's best guess. So do it the McCray way. Come see us just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street. You might run into somebody you know. McCray Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. All right, we are back. Still first to 10 coming up for the cause. Welch in a quarterback. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Flag coming in, stopping play. Looks like we might have had a little false start, and we did on the cause. So we'll back up five yards, replay first down. You know, you know with William Welch coming in now, Coach Paramore is getting this team ready for the rest of the season also. Um, he, he needs some opportunity to, to get some snaps, to throw the ball, run it. William's shown a very good job running the ball this year. And, again, when Welch comes in at quarterback, Kellum doesn't go off the field, folks. He, you'll find him somewhere on the offensive set, whether that's in the, in the backfield as a running back or out in the slot. So, right now, Kellum is lined up directly behind Welch. Number 12, William Welch takes a snap. He gives to Kellum. Kellum going ahead. Straight ahead goes Kellum, looking to be very close to that first down. Looks like he's going to come up about a yard to two yards short. Well, that quick burst of speed was very evident, Armin. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you something. Tonight, um, you're likely to see a lot of reads that are yeah. read to give, and you're going to like to see Dalton run the ball quite a bit. Second down, and we'll call it three coming up for the cause. Number 84, Atchison now in the game at receiver at the top of the screen. Ledbetter and Quinlan at the bottom. Welch, a little bootleg going out to his left. Now he's just going to keep it, run it, pick up the first down. Welch still on his feet, hits the corner, and he oh, gets boy, the boy. corner. Looks like he's going to be in for the touchdown. I, wow. I'm, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, first of all. You've got a sophomore kid. They called, a, they called a pass. He likes to throw the ball, but he got outside. And he saw that it was open, and he turned upfield and scored. And guess what he showed? A burst of speed. Yeah. What are we saying, huh? Yep. Wow. You take what they give you, oh, and okay. he did. You he are did. right, JB. That's a, that's a perfect example of it. They just did well. Number 27, Madison Tinsley on to attempt the point after here. Quinlan again will be your holder. And the kick is up. Looks like it just sneaks oh, over the crossbar for the extra point. You're kidding. I thought that thing take off low. I didn't even finish watching it. It was no. low, but. Uh, wow, good for Maddie. Ten feet, three inches tall. I'll have to congratulate her in class this next week. and be nice to her, I guess, huh? So with Tinsley's extra point, that moves us to 33-0. to Still in the first quarter, 233 left. Cause, again, making things look very easy here in the early going. Well, I, I would say that you're going to see a lot of cause in the game tonight. Uh, yeah. Most of the guys so far that we've seen are people who have gotten limited work, but uh, there'll well, be some young, other well, younger I, kids. I still here. think we're going to see some experimentation with William and, sure. and Dalton this first half. But I think you're right, second half we'll see um, a bunch of the seconds and thirds, and that's the way it should be. There's no sense yeah. of running up the score to no. you know, 80 or 90 points well, or whatever it would be. And the other side of that coin is – it's in, in games like this. It's easy for injuries to occur yeah. because kids let up. You cannot yeah. let up. You got to be on your toes all the time. Yep. Uh, you got to be a hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. You want to stay healthy. Again, it's th there's this game essentially does nothing for you in, in right. standings. You've already clinched the running runner up for the number two position in the district, so you know that you're going to be playing the number three seed coming out of District Four. So keep everybody healthy for next Friday. Here's Melanie's kick. Again, nice kick down the middle. Going to be fielded just outside the 15 at the 16-yard line. The back four of the Cyclones takes the ball out of bounds just across the 30, about the 31. You know, virtually every one of their kick, I, mean, I think maybe one was to this side, their kickoff returns have all been to the right towards their, to bench. their bench. Now, I remember... Yeah, there are times when coaches always tell you, always return to our bench. Well, I'm not the, sure why that is. But. One of the things I saw in one of the films I was watching, they were trying to form a wall yeah. over to that side. But 
quite honestly, they weren't quick enough to get there. It was all over before they even uh, got half the kids over there. So. And again, don't want to start looking too far ahead, but again, as we mentioned, being the number two uh, second place team in the district, we will host next Friday night. So again, you folks, make sure you make it out to the game next Friday for the first round of playoffs for this Perry LeCompton football team. Three receivers set to the right, one to the left for the Cyclone. Stein back to throw, throws it down the middle, looking for that deep receiver. Colton Maloney picks that ball off. And just update on a quick score for you. Holden just scored again. Uh, they're up 22-12, uh, I think, something like that, wow. at, at, uh, at Wamigo. Well, I know that Wamigo is somewhat favored, but I, I still think that uh, it's going to be hard to discount the Holden yeah. Wildcats. I think you're right. And they have played much better in the last few weeks, too. They've improved. Yeah, you, you can bet that it, if they do win that game and we play them next Friday, it's, it's going to be a different Holton team yes. that we see next Friday, different from the one we saw in week number two. That is correct. Yeah, this is our four, poorest field position of the evening. All right, it looks like Kellum back in at quarterback here. Number 40, Patton set just to his right, two receivers each side. Kellum going to look to throw. He airs it out down the sideline, going for Maloney. Maloney oh. has it in stride. And takes it in to the end zone. We do have a penalty marker down around the 10. Let's see what the call is. If it's uh, offensive pass interference, it'll come back. It's defensive. It's defensive. It will be declined. Well, that was a pretty good timing play. I mean, if I'm if I'm the quarterback and I got someone like Maloney out there, I just throw it up and let him run under it, and that's exactly what he did. Well, and you know, Coach Paramore mm -hmm. wants to make sure that, that Dalton's gotten the opportunity to throw that ball a couple yeah. times too because yeah. he's going to be doing it down the road. Yeah. Yep, there's lots of uh, different matchups we can set up with him and William, which is kind of interesting. So another touchdown for the cause. Looks like Mason Frank on to take his turn at an extra point. Snap is good by Roush. Kick is up, and it falls short. No good. Well, one thing to look for, we, we do kind of have a little, uh, a little duel going between... <laughs> The, uh, kickers? the kickers on uh, point after attempts. Right now, Madison's in the lead. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're having a kick out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> they're having fun with <laughs> it. Sorry. Thanks, thanks Sorry, Coach sir. Armstrong. <laughs> oh, they'll stop. <laughs> Again, just a reminder, <clears throat> tomorrow the Perry LeCompton High School cross country team will travel to Sabetha, Sabetha for regional cross country. I believe the girls' race will start at 10.30. The boys will follow also in sub-state volleyball action. Volleyball team will be going to the Wellsville sub-state, and they will be taking on the Wellsville Eagles in their first round game, which should start approximately around 3 o'clock. So good luck to both of those teams tomorrow in their postseason. Go Cause. <clears throat> well, the Cause volleyball team is another team that I've seen play with really – Untapped potential yet, I think. I think they could do a lot of damage. And here's Melanie's kick again. A nice one down the middle of the field. Filled at just about the 16-yard line by number six of the Cyclones. And he's taken back to about the 22, 23-yard line, depending on the spot. And that's where the Cyclones will take that, over. Thad Metcalf running him down from the backside. Man, he put a burst of speed on to catch him. Impressive. Thad, that a boy. See, this sophomore group is going to be tough. Yeah, you've said in, that in the coming class. years, too. That earlier in the year, Armin, I th I'm starting to agree with you. It's, there are a lot of kids yeah. out there that can do some things. I'm not looking down the road because we got a lot of things to look forward to this year. But, you know, it's, it looks to me like it's a bright future for the Parallel Compton cause in, in years down the road, too. So I would agree Let's with have that a good state. year this year. Three receivers to the left side for the quarterback, Stein. Brings 21 in motion, going to the top of the screen. Stein looking to throw. Play is stopped. Flag coming in. Uh, looks like maybe a little motion penalty. Procedure. Yeah, procedure yeah. something. Yeah. And we still have two minutes and five seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah. My goodness. Tell you what, the way this is going, um, second half, we might go grab some of those seniors and bring them up here for a little interview in the booth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. We just need the camera up here. Yeah. All right. Uh, penalty on the Cyclones, first and 15. Looks like the same play, play call. Stein looking to throw. Throws it out, and that ball almost oh picked God. off by number 26. 
Metcalf. Yeah. Boy, he's having a good night. He, he, he knows that he had an opportunity to take that all the way to the house, which was only about 15 yards to the house. Well, we've talked before about good football IQ, understanding the yeah. game, and that's one of those examples. He understood what the play was. He didn't drop off too deep. He kind of hung up there, and he was in good position. Yeah. Hey, just got another text message. Tar Todd Fargo again listening in tonight, cheering hey. on the cause. Hey, Todd, good to see you, man. I'm Said he's sorry. loving the camera work tonight, so, uh, so Casey Elliott is the camera person tonight. Good for her. Stein, a quick throw out in the flat. That pass complete. Ball taken ahead, getting close to the original line of scrimmage. Todd, I think we need you up here. We can put you on the air next week. So, <laughs> Yeah. Should have brought him in the booth for an interview. <laughs> Darn there right. He might be working tonight, though. I think he's doing some moonlighting over at Heritage Motors there in Topeka. Uh -huh. All right, third down and ten coming up for Bishop Ward. Cyclones shift the formation, putting their three receivers set to the left this time. Stein checks the plays on his wrist, checks again with the sideline. Calls for the snap, looking to throw quickly out to the flattest number 21. And he is swallowed up by four caw defenders. 55. Urban, number nine, Cole Logan, number 26, Metcalf, and looks like number two, I believe, Ledbetter. Well, Armand, you've said it before. It's fundamentals and speed tonight, and it's very obvious one team has both well, of them. It's pretty unusual, yeah. though, when your offense goes negative on just about every play. Yeah. Uh, they've, they've only had a few plays tonight that produced positive yards. Yep. Of course, part of that's been penalties. All right, fourth along coming up. Punt formation for the Cyclones. Good snap. Punt is away. It's going to be taken perhaps on the bounce by Williams, number 10. Dawson Williams has some room on that left side trying to get to the corner. Has good blocking up front. Williams still on his feet. Takes the ball all the way down to inside the 30 or the 20-yard line. Nice return. You know, we talk about picking the ball up and stuff on punts instead of just letting it roll in. He That's just right. saved 35 yards. Yes, he did. That's, you know, instead of having it back on our own 40, where are we down? Somewhere around the 10, 15? Where well, are you? Inside the 20. And, he, and, and Dawson, Dawson's not a slow kid. Yeah. He yeah. Said, you know, he's not noted as the fastest on the team. Well, I don't know. He sure showed some speed that time. Finally, the end of the first quarter, wow. folks. With our score, the Paraly Compton caused 39, and Bishop Ward with, still with a goose egg. All right, and we'll take a break and be back here shortly. Ham Quarries provides quality finished limestone products that are required by the Kansas economy. For over 70 years, Ham has been a reliable producer of construction aggregates and used in concrete, asphalt paving, foundation for building pads and homes. They have literally covered thousands of miles in county and township roads. Do you have a rock or gravel driveway too rough for your car? Let him help you find the type of rock material that is best suited for your drive. They can even help you calculate the amount of rock covering needed for your project right over the phone. So let's help that driveway get smooth again. You can connect through the company's website at nrham.com or give the ham company a call at 785-597-5111. Where are my golfer's cap? All right, ready to come back to life here. <clears throat> Start of the second quarter again. Your score 39 to zero, as Mr. Armstrong mentioned as we headed as we head into the break earlier. Let's see, we have a quarterback. Looks like it's going to be 12. William Welch in two receivers to his right, one to the left. Again, starting to get some uh, new faces in here. For Alec the Atchison's offense. on this side, 84. Yes, he is. Up the top is still Ledbetter and Quinlan, the two receivers to the right. Number 20, Kellum, is the running back in right now with Welch. Play, it's nicely designed, but he was able to knife right through there, Armin. Well, our, our guys do a very good job of reading the blocks and reading the, the offensive uh, formation. They know what they're supposed to do, and... Uh, Thad was there. All right, sorry, we were quickly off the air then. Let's see if we're back on here now. 
Having just a little bit of technical difficulties tonight. Stein, again, the quarterback, a quick pitch out to the left side, trying the sweep. Bishop Ward running back straight ahead, going to be close to the first down marker here. And it was their, that was their best play of the night, I think, yeah. the biggest yardage. Yep, I agree. I think you're right. Oh, they're giving them that. That's okay. First down for the Cyclones, their first a of defense, the evening. Defensive coach inside of it says, I want a measurement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I give up anything. <clears throat> And Nancy just tells me, yes, you are back on. We are. That's what we wanted to hear. Not sure what happened there, but I'm glad we got it fixed. And this time the tackles are sliding out to the outside in this uh, little different formation. Quickly going over the middle. That ball is complete and then dropped. So we're going to call that pass incomplete. So no fumble and on the play. And there is a flag on the play. Probably procedure. Yeah, it's back on the line of scrimmage. Not quite sure. The illegal sure formation, set. illegal man downfield. Probably, for, I'm guessing formation, but. You're right, illegal man downfield. Must have been one of those tackles out in that wideout yeah. spot. Yeah. They don't get out there very often. They get pretty yeah. excited. Maybe I can catch the ball. Yeah, you, know. you see. You know, when you're one of those big guys, you get out there, <clears throat> your mouth starts to drill a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so second down to 10 coming up for the Cyclones. Again, still a lot of time left here in this first half, 9.55 and counting. Number 14, Stein still in a quarterback for the Cyclones. Flag coming in on the outside. Stein flips it ahead. That ball is incomplete. And let's see what the penalty marker is about. That was almost a a bad decision on yeah. his part to throw that ball. There were yeah. lots of blue jerseys right there. Yeah, he'd have been better off just throwing it over everybody's head. Oh, look, is there one or two flags down in the field? I, I saw, I thought maybe there was two, but there's one right down. It's one on the sideline. I thought on the was backfield. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing here. Do we get an indication yet? Uh, no, they're waving they off the flag. Waving it off. Yeah. Okay, so no penalty on that second down play. So third and ten coming up as the pass was incomplete. If I'm the defensive secondary, I might be licking my chops right here. Looking for that ball in the air. Speaking it, of secondary, looks like number four. That's Connor Morgison lined up at the left cornerback position. And number 30, Cade Quinlan at the top of the screen at the outside corner position. Motion coming from left to right for Stein, the quarterback, quickly throws out to the outside. Ooh. And the receiver catches the ball, quickly wrapped up, though. Number 40, I believe, Blaine Patton throws that in. Penalty mark, you're coming in. Late. Well, we are just Late. so quick to the ball. So quick. Well, that was Caden Quinlan also that made that initial contact, actually missed a tackle, but slowed him up enough. And we're looking at the Perry LeCompton boys, so... Probably not going to go our way here. Yeah, we're going to be backed up, it looks like. Are they going to call a personal foul? Unsportsmanlike is going to be your call. Yeah. Uh, there's no call for that. No. So we're up by 45 points. You just make the tackle, pick them up, and get back to the huddle. But who knows what went on down there. You know, sometimes those things, they see the second or they see the reaction to something else. Not to say that that happened, but our kids need to keep their cool a little bit better than that. Well, number 58, Hayden Robb coming off the field. 55, Scott Urban, the senior, back on. Urban lined up at one of those inside linebacker positions. And here's a snap. Stein, a little option play to the right. Here comes the Cod defense quickly closing the gap. No gain to maybe even a slight loss. Well, you've got, the, you got the right adjective, J.B., quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It wasn't a bad-looking play, but well, the cost just, was just quicker. It's the same play they made ten and eight, nine yeah. yards with just yeah. just a couple yeah. plays down yeah. before. So quick adjustment because the uh, defense. they just closed. Well, you see it once, and another time out here for the Cyclones. So we will take one as well, and we'll be back shortly. Are you looking for a full-service bank who offers free checking? Then look no further. First State Bank and Trust free checking account is a simple, convenient, no-frills account. 
This account features no service charge and no minimum balance. First State Bank and Trust also makes banking convenient with online banking and mobile apps. Once you sign up for online banking, you're able to use your mobile device. Just search for First State Bank and Trust in the App Store or Google Play. Stop by any of the First State Bank and Trust locations to open your account today. And don't forget to ask about the Call Spirit card. First State Bank and Trust, where banking is still a people business. Just a reminder, we have a very important election coming up this November. One of the most effective and simplest ways supporters of Perry Compton Schools and Kansas Public Education can help students is to vote. Please register by October the 16th to be eligible to vote in the upcoming November the 6th general election. Your voice and your vote matter to Perry Compton kids and the future of USD 343. Okay. All right, we are back, ready for this second down play. And after that timeout by the Cyclones. And let's see what Bishop Ward has drawn up here on second and a long 10. Stein rolling to his left, throws quickly out into flat number 11. Oh. And he swallowed up gains maybe a yard on that second down play. I think it was Dalton Kellum that swallowed him up too. That's just so doggone impressive by the defense. I mean, I know Bishop Ward is a little slow, but my goodness, we had three, four kids there. As that kid was ready to turn, boom, there was no place to go. Absolutely not. Cause playing hot on defense again, fellas. Yes, they are. Forcing another third and long for the Cyclones. You know, guys, you were talking earlier, this Bishop Ward team um, a few years back was was pretty tough, as I understand it. Oh, yeah, yeah they have been. A strong tradition. Two receivers each side for the Cyclones. Stein with a running back set behind him. More of a pistol formation look here. Coach is now changing the play. Got a little formation coming inside. Take a delay. And we have a delay a game. There is a 25-second clock here. Yeah, and, you know, that's a, sh that's a shame for them because, you know, third and 10, that's tough yardage to make, but now it's third and 15. Or 16, whatever. Trying to get some numbers up front. Looks like number 72, Spencer Funk, 68, mm -hmm. Sam Kinsey, at least a de defensive line on the left. Stein, the quarterback, checks the play. Now the running back checks the play. Two receivers each side. Stein back to pass. Heaves the ball downfield. That ball's going to be short. It's going to be picked off by number four, Connor Morgison. Morgison racing down the sideline, trying to get into the end zone. Sidesteps He's defender, still on his feet, and <laughs> Morgison's right. in for the score. A pick six for good, Connor. Good for Connor Morgison, oh, by golly. Good timing, good jump, good catch, and then show the speed and show the moves. That's what you expect seniors to do, something like that. <laughs> there we go. So that takes your score up to 51 to nothing. Still 7.55 left in this game. Well, let's see. Is that the second time the defense has scored tonight? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So, cause doing it all over the field, just uh, totally outclassing uh, Bishop Ward. You know, you're talking about. Um, oh, we we'll get back to it after the kick here. Well, you know, it, it's it's it is interesting in, in the sense that I, I don't really see that that the cause are trying to to pour it on. It's just that Bishop Ward has made yeah. some mistakes yeah. and some easy touchdowns have been scored. And here's a kick. It's Mason Franks. This time gets a little more into this kick, but it does go wide left. So, again, the extra point, no good. You know, I, I, I was going to say, sorry, yeah, go ahead, Armin. No, I was just going to comment. I, I think we can still safely say we need to work on that kicking game. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> you know, was, we were talking a little bit ago about uh, Bishop Ward. You know, when I first came here 20 years ago, uh, they were kind of a powerhouse. I think one of those first few years, I remember going to Hayden and watching them tangle with Hayden. And Hayden was pretty good. And. Hayden won the game, but it wasn't by much. It was a physical game, and uh, those kids uh, were not backing down from anything. So things have gone are a little bit awry for Bishop Ward. They've lost uh, population attendance. I'm sure some of the other parochial yeah. schools in the area have drawn some of their students, and uh, I'm sure it's a little tough to get kids to come out from football when you've lost 55 in a row. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's, that's, like that's that. quite a losing streak. I right. think so, yeah. Well, those streaks eventually come to yes, an end, and correct. and you turn it around, and that's what these guys are looking to do. Mm -hmm. um, not going to happen 
Well, tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> no. It doesn't, doesn't look like. Yeah. Looks like number 58, Hayden Robb, on to uh, kick off for the cause. I think this might be the first time I've seen him kick this year. Yeah. Keep your head down, buddy. There's a the kick. Looks like the tee made it all the way tee down dead. to the 30. Nope. Tee's at the, oh, inside the 25. That return going to the left side oh, where the oh, oh, man is going to be thrown down. Someone threw him down like it was a wrestling match. Who was that? Mr. Armstrong, if, if you have him in class, be sure and give him a hard time about that <laughs> this week. The tee. Aiden, the tee went further than the ball. All right, not exactly, but uh, I'll give him some extra credit points. Yeah, there. you Our bet. Class, cla class yeah. craft game where. Make him smile a little yeah. bit in class. Yeah. Oh, they love it. They love to be teased and stuff. Yeah, he can give it right back, too. Uh, I'm sure he can. <laughs> Ball setting right at the 25 for the Cyclones. 38 for us. Quinlan? The Quinlan. Yep. So Shane Quinlan on the left corner, and it looks like Caden Quinlan on the right. So the Quinlan brothers in at the same time here. Little give this time to the running back. Running back trying to sweep to the right side. Flag coming in. Let's see what we have here, if this is going to be no, a I, hold. I can tell you it is going to be a hold. Chet Bartling was right there, and he got held. It's 51 Kibbe. I guess I don't know 51 is Kibbe. Kibbe. He did a nice job of getting out there and turning the kid back. I mean, he was yeah. you know, step for step with that running back. So Kibbe does a nice job uh, of showing his defensive prowess out there. Something else for us to look forward to next year i think sean had was was he not injured last year correct he had, he was fighting um concussions oh, i tell you what year, i'm yeah. pleased to see him playing because he's yeah. got a lot of ability and a oh, yeah. i'm serious a lot of talent yeah. he's a great addition for this team yeah. dawson williams in on one of the safeties out there number 10. three receivers set to the left for the Cyclones, a give this time to the running back. Sweep left play coming up. Sean oh, Kibbe chases him back from the backside. Oh, Sean oh, Kibbe ran him down. down. Well, now I want to tell you guys, in junior high, this young man was a running back. He was. We did not have a lot of running backs type of students, so he was the kid who, who took over the job. He didn't really like the idea, mm -hmm. but he did a nice job of that, and that just shows you right there. He's capable of a little speed. Oh, my. That was a burst. He, like JB said, he came all the way from the backside, and he tracked down their running back. Well, it's great to have yeah. a lineman that's at, got that kind of yeah. speed, yeah. especially yeah. on defense. That's yeah. athletic. Yeah. It looks like we have an injured cyclone down the field, so we'll take a break while the young man is helped up, and we'll be back shortly. Ham Sanitary Landfill has been providing safe and responsible waste disposal services to communities in Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska for over 25 years. Their local staff and frontline workforce ensure that their operations are professionally managed and are compliant with local, state, and federal regulations. The Ham Environmentally Safe Landfill operation is based on extensive planning, management engineering, sound construction practices, and attendant facility operations. Ham's experience in designing, constructing, and operating the Ham Sanitary Landfill is one of the principal reasons that many counties and municipalities have chosen them to be their waste service provider. You see, not all communities have convenient access to waste disposal sites. In these cases, waste transfer stations are utilized to provide for a cost-effective and sustainable option for waste disposal. Ham provides transfer station services to 10 Kansas counties and the cities of Olathe, Kansas, and Marysville, Missouri. Many of these transfer stations also have recycling drop-off centers where materials can be readied for processing and reuse. HAM also offers collection services with roll-off truck and dumpsters. They have multiple dumpster sizes for your projects, do-it-yourself projects, spring cleaning, renovation, construction, or special waste. They offer local and personal service, easy ordering and scheduling, and multiple container sizes. HAM, the complete solution for your waste service needs. Give the Ham Company a call at 785-597-5111. You've got ideas, making plans, ready to turn that house into home sweeter home. Why not do it best with McRae Lumber? The best materials and the best people to provide solutions for any size project, from concept to completion. We're just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street, but our trucks are all over Northeast Kansas because more and more people are doing things the McRae way. McRae Lumber. 
the building supplier that supplies more than building materials. We deliver dreams done right. And again, just to let you know, we are uh, dealing with an injury on the field. As soon as the young man is helped off the field, we'll get back to action. But again, a uh, backboard currently coming out, so uh, th this may take some time. And we certainly hope the young man is all right. If online banking, automatic payments, and going green with electronic statement describes you, then First State Bank & Trust's Elite account is just what you're looking for. This is one of First State Bank & Trust's most popular accounts. Why? Well, you earn extra money in your account each month you meet a few simple requirements, such as setting up at least one direct deposit or automatic withdrawal, signing up for electronic account statements, using your debit card 15 times as a credit transaction, and logging in at least once a month to your online account. That's it. Sounds easy to me. Give First State Bank and Trust a call today at 785-597-5151 and set up your elite checking account and start earning money back in each month. Thinking about a new deck? McRae Lumber is your deck headquarters with the most advanced products in the industry. See a wide variety of built examples that you can touch, stand on, and use to visualize your deck project. McRae is your local lumber yard. Our experienced and knowledgeable team will answer your questions and find solutions for all your building needs. From new construction to remodels, McRae has been Lawrence's answer for all things building related for over 70 years. Don't settle for the big box runaround. Get it right with McRae Lumber in Lawrence. Ham Corporation has been providing quality construction services since the early 1950s, from small culvert replacement jobs to complex highway interchange projects. They have completed projects for cities, counties, and state agencies. Their experienced teams of project personnel and extensive construction equipment fleet are well positioned to handle grading projects of any size. The Ham Company has skilled rock excavation crews who make drilling, blasting, removing, and transportation of even the toughest rock ledges look easy. Some of the recent excavation, construction, and site prep projects include the Mars Chocolate Factory in Topeka, Kansas, the National Bio and Agro Defense Facility in Manhattan, Kansas, and the West Star Energy Center in Emporia. If you are in need of large-scale excavation, asphalt construction, asphalt resurfacing, or erosion control, give the Ham Company a call at 785-597-5111. Parker Stone, sophomore. Drew Ledbetter, senior. Cole Melanie, senior. Connor Morris, senior. Brent Roush, junior. Floyd, senior. Dawson Williams, sophomore. Jackson Folk, sophomore. 
Billy Welch, sophomore. Colton Ketchum, senior. Hunter Hess, sophomore. Bradley Tuss, junior. Dalton Kellum, senior. Mason Frank, senior. Ryder Beasley, sophomore. Ben Metcalf, sophomore. Caden Quinlan, sophomore. Jackson Payne, freshman. Jackson Glitch, freshman. Rankin Rush, freshman. Shane Quinlan, senior. Blaine Patton, senior. Russell Warren, freshman. Josh Kibbe, junior. Robert Warren, freshman. Bergen Ratzlaff, junior. Scott Urban, senior. Hayden Robb, sophomore. Austin McCrory, junior. Wilson Monaghan, freshman. Colin Resilient, senior. Cordy Wadi, freshman. Karen Ballfelder, freshman. Cameron Jeter, sophomore. Chris Boyden, senior. Sam Kinsey, senior. Brad Trimble, junior. Spencer Funk, senior. Easton Elliott, freshman. Sean Irvin, sophomore. Jacob Brooks, freshman. Chet Bartley, junior. Alec Gustafson, senior. Seth Coxey, freshman. Stephen Boyd, senior. And again, we are uh, still waiting on a young man who uh, is injured on the far side of the field. I uh, do have a, uh, looks like emergency personnel helping him out. You know, hopefully we want to see the best for him. I know the teams are on one knee on each sideline. And, and again, he's, uh, the player's been down injured for quite a while here, guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know we had a comment earlier about uh, what, players kneeling and, and and again on a typical injury just so you know the players do kneel down uh, while the player is, is being tended to the injured player but sometimes in cases like this when it's quite a long time it's hard for everyone just to stay down on one knee there typically needs to be a, a little bit of movement back and forth so uh, again that's uh, the reasoning why there uh, one of the one of the, the length of time just to note the length of time uh, of this timeout was really not indicative of the, the severity of the injury it's just that we exercise extreme caution on that field and if there's any potential problem we want to make sure that student gets treatment that he needs immediately absolutely and again right now the uh, injured player is coming off the field um, with the help of the uh, the ATV there and, and be making his way to the ambulance we get a number on him or anything, JB? I, that, I could not yeah. see it. As soon as he went down, he was yeah. uh, laying flat on his back. And I know a lot of the players <coughs> and, and the officials were around him tending to him. So we, we did not get a number. Well, best wishes to him anyway. Yeah, that's a player's worst nightmare. Is yeah. to and a parent. Uh, yeah. And a coach's. I meant to say yeah. coaches. Uh, players, yeah. they don't think it could happen to them, I know. But. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons the uh, the weight room is so important too to try to prevent yeah. injuries. It can't prevent all injuries, obviously, but when you have stronger muscles, it tends to hold things together a little bit better. But we again, don't, we don't know what the injury was. You know, it's, uh, it's hard to say. That's true. And you tend to when you see that backboard, and and again, I know there's a, there's a nurse here, so we'll probably correct this or tell us kind of how it should be. <laughs> but typically, when you see the backboard, it has something to do with the neck or or yeah. a, a spinal injury. You would think. Jeez. Well, that's what I would think, too, yeah. yeah. Maybe the nurse doesn't want us to comment on that. No, but we respect her. <laughs> okay, so after a little delay here, uh, we're going to be coming down. Uh, we're coming back with a second down. So you're down a distance. Second down and 23 coming up for the Cyclones. Again, 731 still remaining here in the first half. Three receivers set to the left. Stein gives, ball on the ground, now picked up quickly. Number 15 is the back, and he's going to be taken down just outside of the five, right around the seven-yard line. 
just just a, another mistake that that really ate up uh, an opportunity for for the bishop ward again cole logan and uh who is that roush over there very quickly yeah. very quickly number seven is roush i see up front looks like number 71 i think that's brad oh trimble number 64 not sure on that one guys i think that's uh Cayenne Blaufelder. Looks like a freshman. Yeah, we got freshman Thad Metcalf in there, linebacker now. All right. Three receivers set again to the left. Looking to throw. Ball going out to the flat and picked off. I'm not so sure on the pass interference who that might go on. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I think if they call a pass interference, I would not be surprised to see it on them because uh -huh. they had number six was out there actually blocking the defensive back that was trying to pick it. Yeah. And we see those type of plays in the NFL where they call them a little rub play or a pick play. They're supposed to be illegal. Right. They don't get them all the time. You know, so. And that, that was the call. The uh, cause declined the penalty. Fourth down and long coming up for Bishop Ward. Once again, we will have great, great, great field position. Looks like number 10, Dawson Williams. Getting the back, and I can't tell if that's 30 or 38. I do know it. Uh, his last name is Quinlan. Okay, there you go. 38? Oh. That's Shane. Yeah, I oh. can't tell. Is it 38 or 38? Oh, I, you know, I'm. I, okay. that is 38. That's Shane here. Okay. Looks like he's on the outside. The last time Williams got his hands on the ball, he scored. High punt this time. Right in the middle of the field. Takes a cyclone bounce just across the 40, down to the 41. So the cause will start. <laughs> They're an extra drive, good field position. They touched the ball. Mm -hmm. Once they touched the ball, it's live. Yep. I'm surprised that the officials blew it dead. That we yeah. touched the ball? Okay. No, they they, they, they touched their own punt. Yeah. Yeah. Downfield. So it, it would be the first touching. The cause could have picked it up and ran it then, though. Yep. If we would have touched that's, it. That's my yep. point. I mean, that's where you, you want to pick the you ball shouldn't up. shouldn't have blown it dead yet. Yeah. No. But. All right, first and 10 coming up at the 41. Yeah, we're missing a running back. I like our chances just like this, guys. Yeah, just run. Yeah. Run <laughs> Welch and Metcalf in the backfield. Welch takes a snap, gives to Metcalf. Thad Metcalf pounding around the, the uh, right side of the offensive line. Going to pick up three yards. Well, some younger kids there in there again now. Just kind of yeah. punching away at them a little bit. Good experience for them. 84 Atchison again in at a whiteout here at the bottom of your screen. Number 38, Quinlan, the senior, still in the game. Number is four, Connor Morgison at the top of the screen. I think Berrigan Ratchel's in there, is he? Mm -hmm. 54. Give again, it's going to be to Thad Metcalf, 26. Metcalf oh bounces my. it to the outside. Trying to get inside of scoring position. Metcalf still on his feet, sidesteps, and he's in. Speed, 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 speed. My goodness, we have it. Well. And then, um, again, this kid's up front. Once he busted through that line of scrimmage, Armin, it was just a matter of picking your way there. Well, I mean, it's uh, when you score that quickly, it doesn't take much time off the clock. And yeah. so we still get 545 left in the first. All right, another extra point attempt, number 27, Madison Tinsley. On to attempt the point after. Hold is down. Kick is up. And we got one. Yeah, We're go. through. It's good. Not by much, but they all look the same in the scorebook, as they say. Well, the cause once again, fellas, uh, they make quick work of it. We took the ball on the, somewhere on the 35 or 40, if I remember. And... Uh, Two plays? Yeah. Is that what it was? Man. Two plays. Well, it's exciting if you're the player that gets the ball in games like this. Uh, it's a lot to cheer about, a lot to be excited about. So the cause <laughs> not pulling back on that throttle at all. It's, uh, they're pushing forward. You know, I, I think, honestly speaking, um, I think we're the cause are real focused tonight. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that it was quite the same kind of focus as last week. Um, I, I don't know. I This team... They ought to be able to play with anybody in the state. 
Well, I talked with Mike about that. Matter of fact, a halftime interview, I think, tonight was with him, and I asked him how good he thought this team could actually be. And he's of the same opinion, Armin. Uh, they haven't touched their um, greatest abilities yet. They, they've still got a long ways to go. Well, you know, our Sabetha game and the Hayden game should be learning experiences. Yep. And if you're going to learn from them, uh, with this team, your ceiling is way up there yet. Yep. So I, I think we got some things to show. I think you are right. All right, looks like number three, Melanie, on for the kickoff again. Probably just caught his breath now. Just a little bit shorter kick, filled at about the 24-yard line. Sidestep, trying to get out of bounds, but thrown down by, I think that's number one, Parker Stone. Hey, good job, Parker. Parker. Another sophomore. Yep. You know, I would tell my backs, if also Bishop Ward right now, don't, you don't want to wait on them and try to juke them around. Just get what you can get straight up the field. And that's one thing we try to, we, we really believe anyway. Yeah. You, yeah. you get what you can get. You don't juke around. Well, the thing from Bishop Ward's standpoint, by the time they're sign, trying to sidestep, we're just one step quicker to them or closer yeah, exactly. to them. And they're just wasting time. So, yeah, just get it going. I agree with you, Armin. And we certainly <laughs> shown good tackling skills tonight now. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'll tell you what, it, it, I know we still have 5.39 left. It has been a long <laughs> first half to me. Well, it, it has been. It's now 8.29. The game started an hour and a half ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> first and 10 for the Cyclones. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Stein still in a quarterback, a little flip. Actually, uh, more of a lateral it was. pass. Wow. Nice tackle. Can't quite see the number 26, yet. 26, Dad Metcalf, 51. I guess we should Kibbe. be surprised, huh? Yeah. 55, Scott Urban also over there, the senior. Good to see Scott running right and left. I know with a knee injury sometimes that's not easy to do, but he seems to be handling things well out there. It's a good game for him to get back in shape from that linebacking spot. Well, you know, this defense is going to have a lot to kind of shine about. Uh, mm -hmm. there are de I, I would guess right now we're in negative yard territory oh, yeah. Yeah. easily. Second and long coming up for Bishop Ward. High snap handled by the quarterback, given to number 15. The back, again, nowhere to go. 55, Scott Urban, number 10, Dawson Williams around the ball. Also number 71, I believe that's Brad O'Trimble. Well, that is Brad. Yeah. You know, it's pretty hard to run behind that line of scrimmage when when the defense is on top of you before you can get up yeah. ahead of steam. Uh, I'm not a real fan of the two-point retreat blocking stance. Yeah, I guess I'm just surprised at that, too, because they've got tight splits and they've got big kids up there. They ought to be able to put a body on them. Yeah, but boy, the cause are just winning that line of scrimmage. A little halfback pass coming up. High floating ball. And it looked like the, it was not knocked away. Yeah, it was a catch. Good enough for a first down for the Cyclones. Well, we had a new corner out there, just a bit on that little flip out, came up, and then realized, oop, got to get back. I thought the ball hung up long enough he might get a pick on that. <laughs> it was a, a fair catch. I didn't do it. Was, <laughs> it, it, it really wasn't the, the kind of pass you generally want to throw as a quarterback. Yeah. But, no. uh, hey, it worked out for him. All right, first and ten. Cyclones. Cyclones pick up their second oh. first down of the half. We're running wild again here. Yeah, a little bit of student body action. So a lot of players lined up on the offense to the left side of the field. Only four, including the quarterback, to the right. Here's a snap to Stein. A lot of pressure coming up, throwing the ball in the middle. Dawson Williams makes a tackle, but not until you get a nice gain by the Cyclones. Yeah, that was really a well-executed yeah. play, yeah. and they're, they're working on the fact that they've got a different different set out there, doing some different things. Dawson Williams still made a great tackle. Well, and to his credit, he was under a lot of pressure right away. He sure. sidestepped it, and, boy, he put the ball right on the money. Got an update from uh, the Hayden-Wellsville game. Hayden 22, Wellsville 0 at the half. Snap again, a lot of pressure. Now floating it over to the other side, and <laughs> Scott Urban says hello. hello. <laughs> you know, I, I just and I also want to comment though. Thad Metcalf 
broke through the line, and he he contained the quarterback. Yep. He 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 could have attacked him, but if the quarterback sidesteps him, then he's free to do whatever he right. wants to do. He simply kept him in front and continued to advance. The kid had to throw the ball, and boom, get a big, we got a loss. Break, breaking down. Yeah, that's now. exactly breakdown. That's what you got to yeah. do. Third quarter score from Holton Wamigo. Holton twenty-eight, Wamigo twenty. Oh. Got a barn burner up there. Well, maybe one of those games, last team of the ball wins. Third down, quick pass, ball picked off. Picked off. Man, a linebacker. Who's got maybe? it. Try to see who that is. Oh, the boys in blue will be excited. Looks like that. Is that Hayden? I think that might have been number sixty. Oh, it the is. The freshman. <laughs> Wesley. As He's you said, Monaghan. Monaghan. He's yeah. getting slapped on the head, so it looks like he was the one, <laughs> right man in the right position. Good for him. The only thing that could have been better is if he ended up in the end zone. Could talk talk about his moves. Yeah, you know, there's one thing. It's one thing for a defensive lineman to get interception. That's special. Yeah. But when you're a freshman defensive yeah. lineman, yeah. that's really special. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good for them. Good experience. A lot of fun for them. And no pressure on any of these youngsters right now. All right. Again, cause takeover. Still 2:29 left. A lot of young faces out here now for this call offense. Welch, the quarterback, number 30, Kid Quinlan. The running back position. Timeout for something. Two officials talking. Looks like that's number four, Connor Morgison, on the far side at the receiver position. They have been talking to him. Well, let's slow this game down just a little bit more, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. First and ten coming up. Welch takes a hard eye snap, uh -oh. tries to get it away. That ball's fumbled, and we can't recover. tell. We did recover. Cause well, got it back. Well, that's that one ball those was on the ground a long that's time. A, that's one of those situations where Williams just got to realize that, yeah. okay, this play is dead. Don't make it worse. And especially he, in a game like yeah. this. Well, actually, yeah. any time. Yeah. In a tight game, you don't want to do yeah. – you don't want to make a mistake like that either. Yeah. But that's that's what we play. We play the game to, Darn to right. learn. Ooh, here's a surprise for you. Santa Fe Trail 19, Jeff West 7. Wow. My, At the is, half. That is. That's surprising. Yeah. All right, second and long coming up for the call offense. Welch takes a snap. He's going to give oh to number my. 30, Caden Quinlan. Quinlan, oh the Come younger on. brother, has a lot Come of room on. there. The sophomore Quinlan, that's Caden. He's, He's close. Close, close to the yes, first Yes, he down. is. A little short, I think. Showing again, another burst of speed. And yeah, we're used to seeing Shane do that. Yeah, yeah. It's genetic. I think Nick had the speed, too. <laughs> yeah. Nick, that's no, just for you. Yeah. In case you were listening, Nick, I'd put that out there for you. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'll second that. Okay, there you go. Nick had it. Shane has it. Caden's yeah. got it. Yep. All right, two receivers to the top of the call offense. Welch gives to number 26, Thad Metcalf. Metcalf bouncing to the outside. Has enough for the first down. Flag coming in. Holding, face Pro mask. Probably holding, especially with a bunch of younger kids in there. Well, and, and that might not be such a bad, no. bad penalty. That teaches us, a, you know, yep. learns. I mean, we had first down, and we didn't need to hold at that no. point. No, no. Yeah, so that will be a 10-yard spot foul. So it's going to back us up to be a third, and we'll call it seven. I think William might throw the ball. Welch, number 12, the sophomore quarterback, ready to take the snap. And he's going to keep it, move ahead. Ball's on the ground, picked up, but we're going to call him down. Caden Quinlan thought he had a little bit of running room there. Nice. He's excited. <laughs> yeah. Fourth down coming up for the young call offense here. And, again, it's nice to see a lot of those young faces in right now already in the first half. Yep. Still 110 remaining here. Clock is running. Um, we're not going to kick it. I wouldn't think. No. Number 12, William Welch. Shotgun formation. It's 25, Beasler in the H-back position now. Welch looking to throw. Flips it ahead and over th uh, overshoots the receiver. Intended for number four, Connor Morgison, out on the right flat. Well, they had him open. Just maybe felt a little bit of pressure, although Beasler did a nice job of stepping over there and picking up that uh, – Outside pressure, so um, anyway, cause turn it over on downs. All right, so the Cyclones hold. 
Well, like you say, it's a good experience. We've got a lot of young kids out there playing, and uh, what you like to see. All right, Cyclones coming out. Not bad field position. Ball setting at the 35 <coughs> for them. Looks like we have just a, it looks like we have a different quarterback. Number two, the Cyclones now going to take the snap. That's Kevin Nicholas, the junior. Nicholas going to the right, trying to get around the corner. Flag coming in and oh. ooh, folded like a lawn chair, as they yes, say. Yes, he was. <laughs> Uh, haven't heard that one for a while, JB. <laughs> but it's still appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> it was on that. Wow. All well, the young cause, you know, feeling the feelings, the good vibrations, as they used to say. Yeah. The, the varsity defense and offense have set it up, and they're just picking up the pace where they left off. So, Beth, uh, in the fourth quarter, playing Royal Valley up big, 48 to 0. Did I mention fourth quarter for them? Fourth wow. Quarter. All right. So first down and long coming up. We'll call it a 25. Spread formation for the Cyclones. Quarterback rolling to his right under pressure and still in his feet. Now getting to the left side, number 62 and 25. I think 25 is Beasler, 62. I think that's... Uh Brazilian? Yep. Yeah, it is Brazilian. Brazilian. Making a nice play. Another senior getting in there. There's a kid that's really improved this year, his senior year. He has really stepped it up and uh, taken the mantle, so to speak. So, I good like pressure. that. Taking the mantle. Yeah, there you go. And that'll that's be a social end. studies teacher for you right Betcha. there. Good job, Mr. And, Armstrong. And that is the half. Oof -da. Wow. I don't know about you guys. I'm going to have to step up and stretch a little bit yeah, after, little after bit. that one. Right. So we are at the half. We are so we are going to have uh, Mark Armstrong. You have an interview this week, I believe, with Coach Paramore. Coach Paramore, yep, just talking about uh, seasons and uh, seasons so far and how things have gone. All right, so let's get to that real quick, and then we'll try to get back and get some of the cheerleaders and the dancers. Hi everyone, welcome to the call preview. This is Mark Armstrong and tonight we're revisiting head football coach Mike Paramore. Mike, welcome back. Thank you, good to be here. You know, you can tell it's that time of the year again. It's cold weather out and it's raining out and boy, here we are in the heart of football season. And it's turned into football weather and that's nice because uh, it's uh, a lot more fun to play when the weather changes. Yeah, I don't like playing in those 90 degree temperatures, that's for sure. So this year's team, let's talk a little bit about how they've done and what they've done and, and what do you think? Have they met your expectations so far? I think uh, what we've done, I mean, we're pleased where we're at, setting five and one with, with one tough loss. Uh, but as a group, we still got room for improvement. And I think that they understand that. They, they're a good practicing group. They go out and work on the things we see from the week before that we can get better at. And uh, we've done a lot of good things. But uh, they understand if we want to be one of the best teams in 3A this year, uh, we got to improve on some things, and they continue to practice hard, and, and I like how our group goes about their business. So how good do you think this team can actually be? Well, it's, you know, that's a fine line, and we've all been there, of the, the wins and the losses between the top teams in the state and those that aren't quite there. Uh, I think they can be as good as anybody in the state, and we've got some dynamic players. Uh, we got guys that play extremely hard, and, you know, it takes a little bit of luck sometimes, catch lightning in a bottle, but I think our group's in the conversation, and if we continue to work hard at practice and improve, I think we're going to have a nice run in November. Yeah, I think that's good to hear. I know the Caw faithful like to hear things yeah, like that, too. Absolutely. So uh, looking back on the season so far, there have probably been a lot of surprises, a lot of pleasant surprises. Uh, anybody stand out, any group or people that really stand out that have surprised you and you're very pleased with the way things have gone with them? Well, I think, I mean, I don't know if there's any real huge surprises. And we have high expectations for our kids as they do for themselves and what we think they can accomplish. Uh, so, I mean, I like where our defense is. I think... Uh, they've continued to improve. We saw it in the summer when we went to camp. Uh, we really run well to the football uh, and, are, and are playing good team defense. And to grind one out last week is something we haven't 
really found a way to win one that way in the past where our defense had to step yeah. up when our offense was kind of sputtering. Usually our offense puts us in a position because we've been pretty high powered, but you know, we were having trouble converting a little bit, but they kept giving us those opportunities and kept us in the game. So that's that's nice to see that our defense continue to play. Well, and in retrospect, uh, you're talking about the Jeff West game last week. It was kind of interesting. The whole second half, we played on their half of the field the whole night. The offense drove it down there. Couldn't quite score a few times, but the defense held them there. Yeah, and so and we had position all night long. And win that field position game and not give them hope. Yeah. And I mean, that was good to see our defensive guys stand up like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So tonight, uh, tonight's game, uh, as we're videoing this a, a week ahead of time, of course, uh, is against Hayden. And uh, depending upon the outcome of that game, currently we're in, I believe we're in first place, or at least tied for first place in our district. If that continues, um, how does that look for us in the playoffs? Uh, who would we actually play uh, out of the by district uh, matched up with us? Does it look like our district matches up with that district north of us, which is uh, Marysville, Sabetha, Hiawatha. Holton, Royal Valley, and Wamego. And as uh, things pair out, the number one team from our district plays the number four from theirs, two versus three, and then on down. So that's how we match up. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a system that Case has put in place. It's kind of changed what the old district system is, kind of rewards more of your season. Now uh, six games go towards where you get placed in the bracket. Uh, it, it's a tough road. I mean, our matchup out of those first district games is against good folks. Yeah. And we're going to continue to play good football. So it doesn't really matter who we play, whether it's Sabetho, Amigo, Holton, Hiawatha, anybody. There are decent enough teams to be in the top four in that district. Absolutely, and if they've gone through that district and been successful to get out, they've done something. So how do the first round matchups go? Is it the higher seed gets the home game? Is that what that sets yeah, up to be? First two rounds, higher seed, and then they'll start going back to the old system of the east-west, least number of hosted. So, you know, if we can take care of business against Hayden, and we'll play for sure. As long as you're successful and win, you'd have two straight at home. That'd be nice. That would be nice. Be a nice way to start. So, playoffs are set up for us. It's out in front of us. It's us for an attack, uh, and we're right there. So, anything else you'd like to tell the folks and um, before we go on to something else? I appreciate all the support. It's been uh, great to see the crowd, both on the road and at home. I mean, that crowd against Jeff West is probably the best crowd we've had here in 10 years, mm -hmm. and uh, they're a great group of kids that work hard, and I know they appreciate hearing that crowd noise and the support. Looking forward to where it's going to take us. Well, thanks, Mike, and good luck tonight against Hayden and next week against Bishop Ward, our last official home game this year other than the playoffs. So we'll look forward to seeing that. And that'll wrap it up tonight, folks. I want to thank again Coach Mike Paramore for joining us and uh, spilling out his words of wisdom <laughs> to us. And uh, we'll look forward to maybe uh, talking to you a little bit later on uh, once we get involved in the playoffs. So at this time, we'll set it back up to J.B. Elliott, the superintendent of schools, and the rest of the broadcast crew for the rest of the uh, second half of the Bishop Ward game. Thanks and have a good evening. First State Bank and Trust's goal is to provide the highest level of service at competitive rates. They offer a wide variety of loans and can customize loans for unique borrowers and have non-traditional mortgage terms available as needed. Loan officers are only a phone call away, so pick up the phone and let the friendly folks at First State Bank and Trust help you secure your dream home. 785-597-5151 or 1-800-463-7782. When Harry McRae started McRae Lumber in 1947, he built it on a foundation that's still solid today. Customer service isn't something we talk about, it's what we do. Sure, we're competitive with box stores on price, but for expert help and guidance and doing what's best for customers, no one comes close to the McRae crew. Got plans to build something? Do it the McRae way. We're just east of downtown Topeka on 4th Street. McRae Lumber, the building supplier that supplies more than building materials, we deliver dreams done right.
behind the music of wow, Queen. Yeah, yeah. Booty Haggard is the 2018 <laughs> drum major. Our first selection tonight is the song Under Pressure. <laughs> I don't have it on me right now. selection will feature Blaze Ball, Tabor Brown, Amelia Barnhart, and Talena Malloy with a flag routine. and commitment to the band. 
This year's seniors are Sarah Hacker, Joey Hirsch, Thomas Hotchkiss, Nick Hurd, Dalton Cayley, Cooper LaFort, John Holt, Joshua Mitz, Colin Resilian, Hunter Willier, and Hazel Youngquist. Thank you to the seniors and to their moms and dads. to the song, Do It. They are Gracie Gonzalez, Bree Gladback, Katie Hurd, Hallie Gonzalez, Callie Coleman, Laura Guess, Tabor Brown, Talina Malloy, Chloe Daniels, Blaze Ball, uh, Allison Baker, Mia Barnhart, Elizabeth Smith, Gabby Gonzalez, Talissa Stone, and Haley Kellum.
online banking, automatic payments, and going green with electronic statement describes you, then First State Bank & Trust Elite Account is just what you're looking for. This is one of First State Bank & Trust's most popular accounts. Why? Well, you earn extra money in your account each month you meet a few simple requirements, such as setting up at least one direct deposit or automatic withdrawal, signing up for electronic account statements, using your debit card 15 times as a credit transaction, and logging in at least once a month to your online account. That's it. Sounds easy to me. Give First State Bank & Trust a call today at 785-597-5151 and set up your elite checking account and start earning money back in each month. Ham Quarries provides quality finished limestone products that are required by the Kansas economy. For over 70 years, Ham has been a reliable producer of construction aggregates and used in concrete, asphalt paving, foundation for building pads and homes. They have literally covered thousands of miles in county and township roads. Do you have a rock or gravel driveway too rough for your car? Let Ham help you find the type of rock material that is best suited for your drive. They can even help you calculate the amount of rock covering needed for your project right over the phone. So let's help that driveway get smooth again. You can connect through the company's website at nrham.com or give the ham company a call at 785-597-5111. We're back. And just to give you a few of the halftime stats, I know it's not, uh, not much in a game like this when the score is 58 to nothing at halftime, but uh, the big thing that stands out uh, to me, Armin, is... Uh, uh, Bishop Ward throwing four interceptions. I think we took at least one of them, maybe two back for as a pick six. Uh, nothing really outstanding other than that. Uh, Maloney with three catches, 100 yards. That's always good to talk about. And uh, rushing, uh, apparently the Compton with uh, 15 attempts and 161 yards. But quite honestly, uh, the defense has set us up so well, even when the offense did get it, we only had to go 30 yards at a time for right. a couple of touchdowns. And the defense has scored and the special teams have scored. And, and, and really, when you when you really look at it, the defense has been outstanding. Oh yeah. I mean, they got minus six yards total yeah. for the half, and that would have been a lot worse, except for about that last drive, yeah. which they did pick up yeah. several several yards. So. What so, we got? So it looks like back deep to receive for the cause, number seventy-two, Spencer oh, Funk. That's, that's what he was talking yeah. to Coach Barrymore more about. <laughs> Kick it to me. You did see him talking to Coach <laughs> really begging, hard, begging Coach Please, Barrymore. Coach. Yeah, I've heard those begs before, and and he got it. All right, uh, a little, little chop. Far. Yeah, he's not going to get it back to him. <laughs> Too bad, Spencer. <laughs> Parker Stone, number one, covers the uh, uh, the kick, short kick attempt there. That actually was probably a pretty smart move by Bishop Ward. They haven't covered anything all night long. Right. Why would they start now? So just a little squib kick, and uh, looks like we may have a running clock because he's winding it already. So yeah, there we go. Surprised. We do. So it looks like a running clock, uh, mercy rule. If you would, uh, maybe the entire second half when the team gets up by so much, they just run the clock. There's no sense of uh, playing at regulation time. All right, number 12, Welch in a quarterback. Again, a lot of the youngsters in the ball game right now. That handoff taken by Thad Metcalf, 26. Metcalf takes it ahead for about a six-yard gain. Well, we should assume that we pretty much got our – junior varsity out there, which is good. Um, in a game like this, you don't need to risk injury to the varsity players on sure. some freak play. All right, looking up front for the cause, it looks like uh, 60, Wesley Monaghan, 64. Uh, I believe that's another freshman. Cayenne. 51, Kibbe is up front on the offensive line. 25, Beasler is in at the H-back position. Welch takes a snap, a little toss sweep going to Caden Quinlan. Quinlan going around the right side, taken down, still on his feet. Boy. Quinlan taking and out of bounds uh, <laughs> just around the 36-yard line. Caden showing a little toughness yeah. there. He looked like he was just going to get flipped down with the kid that had him by the, the collar kind of, but he just kept his balance, kept pushing. Kept the feet chopping, didn't you bet, he? You bet. Actually, 54 is Berrigan Ratliff. Ratliff. I think there was a 64 out there it's also. 64, coach. yeah. He's, no he's out there. Yeah. Yeah, that, oh, you're right. Kyan. Bluffelder. I think that's it. Freshman, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. I don't know, Kyan. I didn't get the opportunity to work with that young man. All right. Coming up, another first and ten. Can cause continue to, to move the ball with ease here. Welch takes the uh, snap straight ahead. Welch is going to try the left side. He's going to pick up about eight yards on first down. That's pretty tough running for... Well, yeah, he looked real solid on that. Welch is uh, 
have to wonder, too, I wonder how long Welch is going to play here in this second half, guys. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think it's, well, you're right, one of those fine lines. They want to get him enough experience because we'll probably see him in the next couple of weeks. He has that potential to get us uh, above and beyond uh, so we can get Kellum out to different spots and make the defense adjust. Second down and three coming up. Welch gives to Metcalf. Metcalf going to the left side, following some nice blocking up front by that line. <laughs> Boy, he looks tough running, doesn't he? He does. My goodness. Takes the ball down to the 10. It's one of those things where he followed his blockers initially, and then he just got some good vision, Armin. Yeah. Well, there's, there's just not a whole lot of drop-off between yeah. the first group out there and now this group. Well, you're right. They seem to be able to make a lot of yards every time. And Thad does have that vision. Yep. Something you cannot teach. First and ten. Looks like the cause can get a first down without scoring the touchdown. So it is not a first and goal situation. William Welch takes a snap. He's in a little quarterback keep to the left side. Welch dives ahead. Looks like he's going to pick up about eight yards. A little bit of a counter. Yeah. A jab step to the right. A couple of linemen pull. Seal on the inside. And... I thought he also brought the ball up, kind of kind of fake the pass. And yeah. Almost like a draw play then. Yeah, yeah, almost a quarterback draw type of play. Yeah. That's the second time we've seen it on this drive, I think. Welch again, shotgun formation. Caden Quinlan set to his left. Give this time to Quinlan. Quinlan yeah. pounds ahead. Looks like he's, he's going to be in. Ball on the ground. Who has it? Shouldn't have been a fumble that deep once the ball crosses yeah, that you line. Wouldn't, a, you wouldn't have thought. And it's a, it's touchdown. a touchdown. Who got on it? Looks like 25 Beasler came Beasley? out of the pile with it. So does Beasler get the touchdown? Touchdown yeah. for Beasler. Well, and the yardage goes to Quinlan probably. Yeah. Fumble occurred out yeah. this side of the end zone. That's certainly uh, right. I, and it had to. Well, that's a good looking drive for the junior varsity. Yeah. yeah. Really good. And basically the junior varsity. Yeah, you expect a lot of those kids to play because I, as I understand it, Bishop Ward does not have a junior varsity team, so they will not play on Monday. Uh -huh. Looks like 27, Madison Tinsley in again to attempt the point after. Quinlan back in to hold this extra point attempt. Snap is down, and the kick is blocked. Yeah, she's not going to be able to kick against a really well, good team with three steps. And, and that, yeah. was, uh, that was a, that was – not the not the quickest snap and hold. No. <coughs> Who snapped that ball? Usually it's Grant Rouse. But he's not in there, so I was just trying to figure yeah, out. I'm not sure. I just assumed it was Grant. Well, good looking drive by the young cause. Does the uh, clock stop after scoring plays? Yes, yes, yes it does. And timeouts. The scoring okay. plays and timeouts yep. and, and injuries, of course. Other than that, the clock will continue to run on <coughs> Incomplete passes, running out of bounds, those type of things. So just keep it running. Uh, score to report to you, um, 8.36 to play. Holton is leading 34-27, while Migo has the ball. So we'll keep an eye wow. on that score for you. And Thanks again, we will play the winner of that game. Holton or Wamigo. Right now, Holton in the lead by a touchdown. And as we mentioned, we'll play that, uh, that game here. Also, another reminder, again, the uh, high school volleyball team plays in sub-state tomorrow at Wellsville. First game should begin around 3 o'clock. It will be a, a second round game. The Lady Cause are the uh, fifth seed in the Wellsville Regional, and the fourth seed is the, uh, the Wellsville Eagles. Looks like Hayden Robb set to kick off again. All right, let's watch the tee here. <laughs> Hayden, you know we're going to ask you about that. Oh, ah, yeah, tee state, right there you go. That a nice high kick on that one. Ball taken around inside the 25. Spun out of bounds. Looks like that's number one, Parker Stone, on the tackle. Good coverage. Helps to have a nice high kick. Gives the uh, defensive, uh, the, the runners on the kickoff team, rather, chance to run down and make some penetration and uh, get a short gain on that. So good job. All right, Cyclones. They're... Uh, Taking over here, first and 10, ball setting at the 31. <coughs> See if they have some of these same players. It's going to be, who have a quarterback? It's still going to be number 14, Stein, at quarterback for Bishop Ward. 
Well, Mago scored but missed the extra point. 34-33, Holton with 7.21 left Ooh, from got it tight one. Stein looking to throw, airs it out down the sideline. That ball just too far and out of the reach. Cat running across the 25-yard line will fall to Sar's side. By oh, the way, be a we need penalty to zoom on, in on that cat. Penalty on that cat. <laughs> That's us offside. More excited, more excited than we have for a while. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Holy cow. I don't know where the cat came from, but he's fast. Cat quick, as they say. Cat quick. Well, that's a, a diversionary tactic. There you go. Um, Caden Quinlan was back there on the coverage. It's good that he gets an opportunity to see that happen. Mm -hmm. Second and ten coming up. Three receivers to the right. Stein will give play, trying to sweep to the left side. And nothing there. Trying to get some numbers. That's number 11, I believe, Jackson Payne. Also number 81. Is that Bartling? Yes. No. Bartling. Yeah, it is Bartling. It okay. is. That's correct. Starting to get some of these new well, numbers down. Well, number 11 was there in a hurry. He that was made, Jackson Foltz. He made a great uh, hit, had his head across in front, and just kept his feet running. That, the runner didn't have a chance. And then after that, four more guys <laughs> piled on. And so. that always helps. Yeah. And again, loss of yardage. Amazing. Third and about 14 coming up for Bishop Ward. Three receivers set to the left side this time for the quarterback. One receiver alone to the right. Stein, a little throwback play out here to the left side oh, to number six. Nice play. And he's met. Whoa. Nice aggressive tackle by number 25. I think that's Beasler. Beasler. The thing I liked about that play is they pulled somebody out in front to block for the kids. We, they actually had us outnumbered there for a second. But again, the cause quickness made the difference in the play. We yeah. got out there to cover it. Lots of bodies to cover. Uh, given the running clock, I'm not sure. I wouldn't just go ahead and go for it if I these guys. We'll see what they do here. I think they are. They're not in punt formation, so. Yeah, what difference would it make? Caden Quinlan and Wyatt Williams will need to come up and play at their safety positions here. Stein in the shotgun for the Cyclones. He's going to roll to his right, looking to throw out in the flat. Pass complete to number 15. First down. And I believe he's going to have the, yep, have enough for the first down. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Running clock. Yeah. And, and honestly, uh, cause have scored every time they've touched the ball anyway, yeah. just about, except, what, one series? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it makes sense get get an opportunity. They weren't on their own goal line. Well, that's the one play that they've been having success with. Yes, too, that particular play. Right. <clears throat> Always to the right, by the way. That is right. Correct. Bishop Ward with another first down here. Stein looking to throw. Pass is in and out of the hands. Intended for number six yeah. for the Cyclones. Sam Alexander. He's one of only two guys on this team to start both both ways, mm -hmm. offense and defense. So he, he could be a tired young man. Yeah. 51, Kibbe, and number 60, mostly Monaghan coming out of the game. Second down and 10 for the Cyclones. Beasley and Folks at the inside linebacker position. Stein looking to throw. Pump fakes once under pressure. Flips it ahead and almost intercepted. I think it or might it have was, been. It might have been. I think it was, yeah. Let's see. I, I think that was. Uh, waiting for a signal. <clears throat> I think that was Jackson Folks that got that interception. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, it was. At least that's how he got greeted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's something to be excited about. So that's five picks for the night. And when Coach Swafford gives you a hug, you know you did something good. There you go. All right, so the call offense takes over. Ball setting at the 44. Again, with that running clock, we are getting underneath about two minutes and 40 seconds. Hunter Hess, number 15, in the wide out at the bottom of your screen. Welch takes a snap, drops it on the ground, and covered up. Oh, there. He learned from he the did. experience. Oh, he tried to make something out of nothing, so he did a good job of just following We got a point. penalty flag very late. 
That usually means personal foul. Oh, huh? sideline warning, maybe. That's what that is. See him over on the other side? Yep. Stopping the clock, sideline warning. And stopping the clock and having a timeout. Bishop Ward, so we'll take a break and get a word in from a sponsor, and we'll be right back. <coughs> Are you looking for a full-service bank who offers free checking? Then look no further. First State Bank & Trust free checking account is a simple, convenient, no-frills account. This account features no service charge and no minimum balance. First State Bank & Trust also makes banking convenient with online banking and mobile apps. Once you sign up for online banking, you're able to use your mobile device. Just search for First State Bank & Trust in the App Store or Google Play. Stop by any of the First State Bank & Trust locations to open your account today. And don't forget to ask about the Call Spirit card. First State Bank and Trust, where banking is still a people business. Hey, Mark, you ready to do that again? Okay. Go ahead. Um, Quick for a note from Pat uh, Winchester on uh, the Holton Wamigo game after the kickoff rolled between the runner's leg. Holton goes three and out uh, inside their own 10. Good punt, and Wamigo takes over on their own 48. 532 left. Wamigo down by one. So okay, thank you for Pat Winchester updating us on that. Metcalf carried the ball, picked up about five yards. Penalty marker coming in, going to be a hold on the cause. So we'll back up 10 yards from the spot of that foul. Sorry, Mark, I didn't have you on the first time you said that. Well, that's good. I didn't, I, good practice. I re, yeah, I, I realized that after after you kind of tapped me. It's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, well, that's okay. Who's the producer around here anyway? I don't know. I, I, I think that's the should, camera person who's also the producer. I think so. Well, let's have a little talk on her. She's sleeping. <laughs> All right, second and long coming up for the cause. Welch looking to throw, lays oh, one up. Has Williams down the left sideline. That ball is complete, and they pick up all the yards they need for the first down. Ball going to be setting inside the 30 to about the 25. Yeah. You just get a little less air underneath that ball, and that's a touchdown. Yeah, he yeah, put it on the money, but you're right. A little less air, and he'd still be running. Well, they look good. Well, he threw that a long ways in the yeah. air, too, because yeah. that was kind of across the field. Was it Williams that caught it? Yeah. Oh, yep. boy. It was. Number 10. All right, first and ten. Coming up for Perry LeCompton. Uh, ball bounces just the right way for Welch. Snap came off his shoulder pads, bounced up in the air, and, and right into Williams' hands. You know, there's been a little a little problem with the, the snap between mm -hmm. Welch and the center. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that's. I'm not sure what that's all about, but. I'm not sure who's snapping right now. Again, it's not. That's true. Oh, it's Monaghan, I think. Is that is that right? I couldn't tell. I'm trying to see who's lining up over yeah, center right sec now. If it's 60, and, and Wesley did snap uh, as a 7th and 8th grader. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's not Wesley Monaghan. All right. So that's going to bring the end to the third quarter. So that quarter much faster yeah. than the first two quarters that we had. So. Yeah, we'll take a break here from the booth, and we'll be back shortly. Thinking about a new deck? McCray Lumber is your tech headquarters with the most advanced products in the industry. See a wide variety of built examples that you can touch, stand on, and use to visualize your deck project. McCray is your local lumber yard. Our experienced and knowledgeable team will answer your questions and find solutions for all your building needs. From new construction to remodels, McCray has been Lawrence's answer for all things building related for over 70 years. Don't settle for the big box runaround. Get it right with McCray Lumber and Lawrence. Okay, coming back here, get ready to start. The fourth quarter in this District 3 contest between the Cause and the Cyclones. Cause have looked good tonight. A part of that is multiply because Bishop Ward, quite honestly, has not looked very good. Um, yeah, the, the good news, though, I, I would say even our younger players, yeah, yeah. some of our, our, our 
players that don't start necessarily, but do get some playing time, have looked very good. Yeah, I yeah. I agree with that. Again, with quickness. Yeah. It runs top to bottom. So let's see what we got here for this second down and 12 play coming up. Number 12, the sophomore, William Welch, again, still in a quarterback. Three receivers to the top of your screen, trying to get the numbers over there. Looks like that's number 11, Jackson Folks. Uh, number 26, Thad Metcalf, 15, Hunter Hess. Number 25, Beasler is in at the H-back position in front of Welch. Quickly out to Hess. Hess makes the catch, trying to get up field, turns it up, does take the ball up to about the original line of scrimmage, setting at the 36, I'm sorry, 26-yard line. Quick update for you, fellas. Pat Winchester just showed me through the window. Wamego just scored. They're up, uh, I think it was 38-34, going for two. Wow. So it's back and forth game mm -hmm. between Wamego and Holton tonight. The last team that gets the ball. And how much games. time did you say is left? I thought it was like 2.52 or something like that. If I can, my memory isn't what it was. Well, if I remember correctly, uh, Holton's going to have a tough job on their hands because they tend to like to run the ball and yep. grind it out. So either a big play or an uncharacteristic pass might be in order there. Third and 11 coming up. Welch flips it out. It's going to be complete to number 25, Beasler. Beasler takes the ball inside the 15. Now, Welsh did a great job of recognizing that he had to get that ball out in a hurry, and he just up and released. It was a quick release. Super well, job. Well, Amigo goes up by seven with 241, I think, left in the game. Wow. 4134. 4134. Just got that update yeah. also from Saul Heidi. He's keeping track of that one for us yeah. as well. Big yeah. Everybody's watching that game. Yep. Holton generally goes for two anyway when they score, so it'll be yeah. interesting to see what happens if they score. Yep. Caden, Quinlan, and Hunter Hess to the right. Ball give to Folks. Oh, yeah. Folks nowhere to go, wrapped up by that Cyclone defense. Yeah. Number six. Number six is Alexander. Sam Alexander yeah. on the tackle. I think that's probably as, as good of a defensive line yeah. play as we've seen tonight. Yeah, that's one of the few times they've actually stopped us at the line of scrimmage, so it's uh, – uh, interesting to watch. Second and about 14 coming up for the young call offense. Hunter Hess, number 15, is going to be split wide to the top of the screen. Parker Stone will be split wide to the bottom. Caden Quinlan in the slot on the left side. Jackson Folks, number 11, the backfield next to Welch, the quarterback. Little read option play. Welch keeps it going straight ahead. Nice read by the sophomore quarterback. That was a good read. What Jackson folks convinced a couple of guys that yes, he, he had did. the ball. Yeah. I think Alexander, number six there from Bishop Ward, was sold. Yeah, he was. He, he, he thought he'd made the tackle for about a five-yard yeah. loss. Yeah, a little, never a little trivia for the folks at home. If you don't know, we run kind of a fast break offense. You see the, one of the managers on the sideline here holding up a big white card. On the other side, there are pictures or symbols. And they have it predetermined which one they're looking at uh, to call the play in the formation. So that way we don't run plays in and out of the game. So I wish they had done that when I was <laughs> coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and five coming up for the cause. Welch takes a snap. And again, a little give this time. Folks, folks, oh pounding boy. ahead. He's going to be real close to the first down. Number Take 15. About the five. Number 15 grabbed his shoulder, but and just. Barely slowed him down, but he did a good job of fighting it off and making yards. Well, I'm sure. You know, talking about those things back in the old days, I can remember the days I grew up in Minnesota, but there were rules about not calling yeah, plays. Uh, that's right. Know, the quarterbacks had to call the plays. They wanted to keep the game more pure because that's <laughs> out the window now. You know, we got guys on top of us up here on the booth making the calls for that. Yeah, even plays. in the NFL where they got the radio in the helmet, right? Oh, yeah, they got the radio yeah. one. Yeah. The uh, uh, Coach Bill Culver would uh, dis disapprove of that, though. We had a week up in Colorado two weekends ago. <laughs> he said, I think we ought to still be doing that. The mm -hmm. Coaches shouldn't be calling those plays. Let those kids call the plays. Yep. That yeah. involves – there's a good point to that. It involves teaching you the game of yes, football. Yes, that's sure. right. So a quarterback sees what's going on out there. Hey, in this formation, we might be successful at that. It teaches them and their, their own IQ, their football IQ as a team comes up. And I certainly would agree with that. However, we've all seen just the opposite, too, where we've got 
professionals, the coaches have spent hours and hours and hours oh, yeah. realizing in this formation they're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of an interesting little thought. But uh, You sound a little like Coach uh, Bill Culver. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you know, there's a part of me that's a purist in the game, but uh, I would hate to be the quarterback to make those decisions. <laughs> well, you know, if it were something that had happened every weekend, you'd yeah. get over that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you'd get used to the fact that your quarterback's going to be calling that game. I, yeah. I, I can see the benefits. Of it. It'd be kind of interesting. Yep. Well, I can certainly see a, a, a Mike Paramore coach team a quarterback understanding yes. and well enough to do something yeah. like that. Yeah. Fourth and short coming up for Perry LeCompton. Caden Quinlan back in the uh, end zone. Oh, oh, nice yeah. catch. Oh, my God. oh, we didn't see that on video. We didn't see that on video. No, nope. but uh, Parker Stone in the corner of the end zone made a really nice catch. An exceptional catch. Just take our word for it. Yeah. Well, it was good timing on the throw. He threw it before he broke, and he knew he was going to throw it to the deep corner. And he just stretched his arms up, jumped a little bit, caught it, tucked it, and rolled on the ground. So I tell you, Welch put some – he put some zing on the ball, yeah, too. Yeah. That so that, nice that's spin. one thing that made that catch yeah. stand out. It wasn't just floated. But, you know, now it gets to the point, too, where that score is actually getting kind of embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. 70 to nothing. And, you know, but you can't tell your kids not to score. You can't tell them to take the knee, you know, every every down out there. No, but I, I think what you're going to see coming up <coughs> now is, is going to be even some of your younger kids. I, I agree. Uh, probably that. more of your freshmen, I would think. Yeah. So it's time to start getting them in a little bit. Well, yes and no. Remember, that's pretty much still their varsity out there. They don't have a lot of younger no. yeah. kids on the team, and you hate to put a freshman up against a 270-pound senior, you know, that type of stuff too. So, But I agree with that. I think there will be some playing going on. That's well, looks hey, good. we got that one through, 71-0. Yeah. to zero, Now your score. Yeah, but I think at 71-0, to zero, you, you, you probably lost a lot of fight in the dog, so to speak, right. uh, oh, for yeah. those guys on the other team. Yep. Well, actually, that's true, but – but on, on a bunch of young kids from, from the team who don't normally get into a varsity game, there's probably a lot of fight in that dog yet. Yes, there is. And yeah, I mean, they've gotten two. Some of them have got three and four quarters that they played. I mean, quite honestly, we were subbing a few kids out in that first quarter. Sure. <clears throat> bringing some of the better JV kids in right away. So uh, they have played a lot, and that's good. I wouldn't be surprised next time we have the ball that uh, Parker Stone may be in a little bit of quarterback. So he's been running the JV quarterback position pretty much yep. the, the whole year so i uh, you know parker parker used to do that as a seventh and eighth grader and uh, mm -hmm. he can, he's certainly capable yep he's a smart kid yeah he's looked good in the jv games throws a nice pass <laughs> yeah, he's he's a kid you know again as a sophomore he's going to be great backup mm -hmm. uh who knows maybe he can win that starting job one would never know one well, would not good athlete i tell you what his, his uh, sister who's a senior this year's Pretty good athlete herself yep, and one yes. heck of a good volleyball player. Yep. Talisa can really hit the ball. They're good kids. Yep. Speaking as a substitute teacher who comes in and sometimes, you know, the kids don't like the substitute teacher, but <laughs> those Parker kids are good kids. All right, another kickoff for the cause. Malini number three in to kickoff here. Clock will begin to run and stay running, hopefully, as soon as the uh, ball is fielded. Ball taken inside the 10. And nowhere to go once the return man got to the left side. Oh, that would be to the bench side. Again. Yep. <laughs> well, I, 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 would, I would wonder if maybe you didn't start to figure He's, that. Did they call timeout? No, they did not. No, clock no. should be running. So every time you kick away from the bench, make them take it the long way to the bench, and you got them there you go. Make, up, right? Makes it easier to cover. Sure does. All right. Again, Bradley. Nope, Bradley Trimble's coming back, number 64. Did they just Can now make the ball ready for play? Yeah. yeah, they were supposed to actually make it ready for play when the team was ready to go, but he, was, he just wound them up. They had plenty of time. Yeah. All right, Cyclones again. This time, number two, uh, Kevin Nicholas is in a quarterback for Bishop Ward. Nicholas takes a snap, looking to throw under pressure. Oh, boy, come on, come on. 52. Oh, nice the block. Parker messes him, flagged down. 
Yeah, number 60 just planted. Was it 25 for us? Number that was 68. 68. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He and that's exactly right. But I think that might be the block that got. I think that's the flag. The flag. Yeah. I think you're right. Oh, hold, hold on us. Wow. Okay. Well, well we defensive corrected. holding on. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, maybe they grabbed the receiver so he couldn't break free. I don't know. That'd be about the only thing. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just good coverage. Number yeah. 52. Well, could Robert, be why it was good coverage. I don't know. Robert Warren in up front. Ah, yeah. Freshman. You know the young man, Herman? I do. Number 14. Another one of my favorites. There we go. Of course, almost all those guys out there I do know, <laughs> and they're my favorites. But yeah, three receivers oh. to the left. Nicholas looking throw under Good pressure. pressure. Number thirty-four freshman Riken Rush takes him down. And number sixty put the first initial rush on him. So. Good job by the young kids. I'm glad to see Rack and Rush out there. Got another freshman going in out there, number 74. Who would that be, JB? I think that's our guy that sometimes fills in a camera for us. I think that's Easton. <laughs> that's yeah. Easton Elliott, huh? He's a, he's a trombonist, <laughs> a cameraman, and now he's a tackle. Bishop Ward, three receivers to the right. Nicholas takes it under pressure again, flips it out in and out of the hands. One four, you have to catch it before you can run. Yeah. yeah. All right, clock's still running here. We are finally under five minutes, fellas. Boy, That's great. Oh, boy, this has been a long night. Not yeah. that I don't like working with you guys. That's not what I'm saying. It's just been a long yeah, football I, game. They went past my bedtime. Any longer, I might turn into a pumpkin or something over here. Third down and long coming up, about 17, maybe 16. Nicholas guiding the running back to the side that he wants him on. Calls for the ball, looking to throw. Under pressure, number 60. Monaghan wow. takes him down, and the freshman gets to him. Nice job of uh, breaking down and wrapping up, I'd say. Yep. Did a good job. Now the freshman coming in, that's number 63, Coyd Wildy. Robert Warren coming out. The young cause have looked good. Must have had some good coaching in junior high or something. Well, That's I, what I think. I yeah. wonder. I wonder. <laughs> <coughs> Bill Culver, wherever you are. 32, Jackson Payne into the game. Also on the far side, 85, it's Seth Cooksey. Parker Stone, number one, playing the safety. Fourth down along. It might be a return opportunity. For Parker, Jackson Folks also dropping back beside him, and it's going to be a, a fake. fake punt. Yeah, you can almost see that. Coming. That's a long ways to fake a punt. But they stop him short. Good job, yeah. cause. And and you know on on their part, <coughs> it was a much better better play for for yeah. Bishop Ward than if they kicked the ball and. Yeah. We have a flag now, a late flag. All right, so yeah. we have. I'll get it to him. I'll take it to him. Okay, and first down. Cause are gonna get the ball all after the turnover on down. Unless a, I do see a flag. a flag. Yeah. And it was a late, very late flag. So could be another. I have a personal line. foul on Bishop Ward. Yeah. Well, there's only two and a half minutes left in this game, but next Friday night we will host the winner of Wamigo and Holton, and I will guarantee you that will be much more of a competitive game. Yes, it will and be. And it's a final now. What's the final? Final is Wamigo 41, Holton 34. Wow, Wamigo wins. Yeah. So that's who we will be facing here at home next week. And Wamigo, are they the Red Raiders? Is that what they are? I believe that's it. Parker Stone in at quarterback, hands oh, it to there, there. number 33. Look at him go. Look at that quickness, trying to get to the corner of the end zone. Reaches in. Number 33 for the cause, that's Jackson Blitch. Yeah. Right 
Jackson Blitch. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not. What's that? I think the announcer here announced that it was Reich and Rush. And yeah, but it's 33. I, I could have believed that. His dad yeah. could have done that, too. I know, but Jackson Blitch, yeah, I can mm -hmm. believe that, too. And it is Jackson Blitch. Yeah, he's up on some shoulders down there right now. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see the young kids get excited. Yeah. Play in front of a big crowd in the night and uh, a varsity game. Boy, it doesn't get much better than that. Oh, we got a final coming in. Uh, we got a flag. And Jeff West, 22, in. Santa Fe yeah. Trail, 19, final. Okay, final was what was that, JB? Jeff, Jeff West, West came back to wow. beat Trail. Jeff West, 22, Santa Fe Trail, 19. Oh, my. Wow. Wait, that's not over. That's in the fourth quarter. Oh, okay. Well. So let's see how that one ends up. Well, I tell you, the district here has had a couple of good games tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From a Perry standpoint, that this was a good game, but uh, yeah. it uh, did what we needed to do. We won the game. Our uh, starters got a little bit of action to work some of the kinks out, and uh, nobody got hurt. So we can prepare for Wamigo and hopefully go on from there. So how do we mark this off? No flag. No flag. I say they blocked it. Though. Maybe there shouldn't have been a flag, so that must be what it is. Good enough. Okay. <clears throat> well, 121 left. Boys, I think this one, uh, we can call this a victory for the cause. I, 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 I think, yeah. I don't think you're early. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the onside kick's going to get this one back. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and well, and, and again, we know what the uh, final score was now for Wamego Holton, so we know what's going to happen there. So it will be a, again a nice home game. I hope, I hope next Friday evening is as nice, yeah, weather-wise as yeah. this one. You know that speaking of Holton, they, that's one of the first first times they've ended up with a losing season since uh, Barda's tenure there. Since his first year, first I year, think. I guess, I yeah. So they they're going to end up three and five right now, and depending on next week, uh, they will play Hayden. So. Ooh. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll take I'll take the Wildcats, but I'll take the ones from Topeka. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. you right right now, if this team right here, the PLHS cause tonight, had played the way they're doing tonight against Hayden, I, the outcome may have been the same one loss, but yeah. I think it might have been right down to the wire. Yeah, they played a little bit more sharp tonight. I think they weren't just uh, <clears throat> going through the motions maybe. Like well, they, they could have. But I would, I thought last week defensively they played every bit as good yeah. last week defensively they did. Or yeah. Tonight. It was, it was the offensive side of the ball again. It just it, it hasn't clicked. Well, and, and Hayden made no mistakes to speak of. Well, they they dropped the ball three times yeah. and recovered all of them. Yeah. Um, just couldn't connect, connect now, the paycheck on that one. Yeah. Well, and he has a short kick going to be fielded right at the twenty, by Alexander. Alexander. Takes it down. Jackson Blitch, number 33, number 51, Kibby in on that tackle. And this should be about it. Now we, we are getting close to one minute. We shouldn't have a reason to stop the clock. And again, we've been here long enough, fellas, that uh, kind of wind this one down as the <laughs> clock winds down, uh, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, I'm winding yeah. down. Well, you've uh, talked an awful lot, JB, tonight, it, the extension of the game and the number of plays, so you're – Throat probably going to need some nice uh, soothing lozenge or something a little later yeah, on tonight. I'll, I'll look for some something. holes tonight. There you go. There you go. And looks like Nicholas going to heave it deep. That ball going to fall pick, in short. Got to pick. Be picked off by Parker, Parker Stone. Stone. Stone's a fast kid. Has a lot of room on that right side. Oh, my. He's going to Flag get in. coming in. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Wow. And that was a uh, – Okay, let's see if we keep the clock running here. Yeah, that'll be probably be the last play of the game. That is. You know, some people are gonna look at that score and say, "Gosh, you you, know, you run it up." But I'm gonna tell you, when 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 you're down like this and you're going to heave the ball all the way across yeah. the field, you're you're taking a chance of intercepting yeah. it and taking it back. For a Which is what happened several times. Well, I think that would have been the sixth pick tonight. Yeah. 
had four in the first half, and I believe we've had two in the second half. Yeah, why'd they stop the clock? Yeah. And another well, we've flag. got another flag here on the sideline. Oh and another flag on the sideline. I, I would so say I'm that's on the yeah, – we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, that's too bad. That's just – I'm sure it's just frustration. Yeah, it is. Uh, this one can't get over soon enough for yeah. both sides, I think. Right. Well, again, as we get close to signing off, wow. Mark, anything you want to add in here before we uh, – you know, there's nothing really much you can else you can say other than we look forward to next week uh, having Wami go here. It'll be an exciting game. It's the playoffs begin, and everybody will be pumped up for that. Yeah. So that'll be fun for us to, to go through. It's hard to beat playoff football. That's right. In October. Armin, how about you? Anything to throw in before we get into next week? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to, to play next week, especially Wami go. I – you never you never want to say I'd rather play this team than that team, but but honestly, uh, I'm, I'm afraid Holton would have had a great desire for revenge after that yeah. earlier game this year, and it'll be interesting to see Wamego. Both teams obviously very similar kinds of teams in terms of their abilities because they ended up with a shootout. So, and again, looking at the uh, the bracket for the playoffs, so. Next week, it will be Wamigo coming here to Perry LeCompton. It will be uh, Holton going to Sabetha. The winners of those two games will play each other. And because Sabetha has the higher seed, whoever wins will go to Sabetha, yeah. by the way. So if we happen to win that, just go ahead and prepare yourself. So it would only be the fourth game in a row that yeah. Perry has gone to – Perry LeCompton has gone to Sabetha. Right. Wow, that's a <coughs> – and they've all been big games, too. Correct. All right, so this should be the last play. Knee taken by number one, Stone, and that will wrap it up for the cause. So it is all Perry LeCompton here tonight. Your final score, 77-0 to zero in favor of the blue team. And I certainly hope as these, as these young men walk across the field and shake hands, everything stays clean. Sometimes in games like this, it can be just a little bit uh, interesting and chippy. Chippy? I yeah. hope that's not the case here. Well, you know, in a way, you've, you've got to feel a little bit sorry for uh, uh, Bishop Ward. Totally out class, literally, uh, tonight. Uh, just, um, yeah. They just weren't prepared. They weren't uh, ready to even compete uh, against cause who are quicker, stronger, faster, more organized, you know, you name it. So. And, again, I, I think if you look at the stats, you're going to see a lot of different names. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the stats tonight. It wasn't just varsity kids, obviously. Right. They were done will. at half. So uh, certainly that wasn't the case. A lot of people will think Dalton Kellum had, must have had four or five touchdowns tonight. Yeah. But uh, they spread them out. Yep. Well, I think that was a good decision by the coaching staff. You know, you want to rest Dalton. He's been taking some uh, hits the last couple of games. Just Jeff West and uh, Kent Hayden. He was banged up pretty bad. Didn't want to get him banged up anymore tonight. So limiting his repetitions. Yeah. So. Was calculated. And every every call had a good night. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, for Mark Armstrong, Armin Landis, J.B. Elliott, uh, we're going to sign off here. Thanks again to the camera work for Casey Elliott. Uh, appreciate that tonight. And we will be back here. Always better to be back home. I think our facility is mm -hmm. our, our top notch when we sit down in the booth here. Amen. Uh, much more comfortable to be at home than on the road. So we <laughs> will right. see you next week when uh, Wamigo comes to town to take on the cause and play off action. Good night, everyone.